it, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back for week number four of the ECAC Top 8 Plays of the Week. Now, at this point, you're probably realizing two things. One, that's right, I'm going to be with you all season long as we jump through the best moments of every week. And number two, wow, Seth Collins really only wears one thing when he's not on the clock. And it's, I, I can't even defend myself. It's a comfortable outfit. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump into week number four and see what these players brought to the table to beat out their opponents and be victorious. Wake Forest was already up a game, there were 4 minutes left on the clock, and they just couldn't find that first point to take the lead and put them up 2-0 in the series. But in a final moment of success, Malone clears it from one coast to another and finds an open goal, giving Wake Forest the lead once again. These champ 3 and champ 2 is doing, I mean seriously, look at Malone making advantages for himself. He wow. And he will put Wake Forest on the map. This game number 5 could just go their, their way. I just want to say Malone just said, I'm going to show you what a champ three can do. All right, buddy. On a control map in Overwatch, your team must capture 100% of a point to succeed. 99 just won't cut it. King Rock from Keene University was fully aware of that and didn't just find a death blossom. He found a full-blown death garden to keep his team alive. Sound barrier to go away as well, especially now that you have your own. It's going to be a little bit more breathing room. Does it look like the one Okay, there we are. Now it's coming up big. This Reaper has bloomed. That was just gorgeous amount of patience. Coming. GVSU Blue found themselves up by five rounds, and it's always better to turn that five into a six. It's incredible, however, that this team doesn't always need all five. It can come down to just one player and how much they can really GVS do. An illusion delivers with efficiency. Three in a row, no time left, even if they had the chance at Orbital Strike out of the last inning. This battle between Muskingum and St. Francis was insanely close. Only three players in a round, and there were one player left on both sides, both down to their final stock. Things were looking pretty strong for St. Francis, their Luigi only at 40%, but it was up to Splat to do anything but. Just keep him, keep, keep him off stage with that Zer. Oh, if that that's ball right here if for that, Teo. If that block didn't, uh, if that block didn't disappear. About, oh, no way. Ho! Just steps on the, Hunters steps on, on the, the uh, pressure plate. A tale as old as time, Pace White versus Pace Gold, and Pace White's morale was through the roof as they won a fight. But little did they know, this was Lofi's world. And they wouldn't be living in it for much longer. Going in with the blade. Uh oh, oh, blade is out. Oh. It's hacked. It doesn't matter though. Slashes oh. away for two. Looking for a third. Oh. Looking for four. Won't get it just yet on the blade. However, the slash and dash works out. Lofi's got three. Looking for everybody else oh, on this team. Four. It's a white. The Inkling versus Ganondorf matchup is not very good for Ganondorf, but let's be honest, which matchups are? In this clip, we're going to be watching as JD from Fisher learns the hard way that. You never really want to meet an inkling off stage. Sooner, if you don't find that kill confirm or that kill confirm oh. or a bomb off stage like that, that Kayushi's bomb angle is so Ooh. good today. Yeah, that bomb angle was beautiful. Week four of ECAC Rocket League was absolutely insane. CMU and FC were tied up zero to zero, but it was Gan who told FC. They shall not pass game number two. Side of FC, they've only got one player for a moment there. They're trying to recollect. They're trying to reposition. But how do you position around a pinpoint accurate shot like this? Gand goes crossbar down for the first goal. Adams in reverse. Backs the defense off with that. Whenever I'm on the mic for Valorant, you'll often hear the line, check your corners, repeated over and over and over again. And even with me not on the mic to tell them, I have a feeling this team may have learned that lesson. Nah, he's, he's gotta take the shot. Take it. Oh yeah, good. Sounds of teammates running on through and come on dive! Completely unaware trio. And it's 11-0 right now. 
And those are the top eight moments we thought deserved just a little bit more time in the spotlight of week number four here at ECAC. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're interested in what ECAC has going on, we got something happening nearly every day of the week. So check us out right here. Editor, it's a challenge for you. Wink, wink. And folks, this has been all for me. Thank you all so much for watching. Enjoy this, and we've got plenty of weeks down the line. Can't wait to see what comes of them. And there's so many other jobs as, as well that That's can right. translate out of this experience in esports. We're at the Collegiate Esports Commissioner's Cup. Let's make some noise. Oh, and it's going to be what? The corner judge is for one, two, ten. He needs more in the... They're doing even more here! You gotta touch the point! Central College walks it in! Toy Boy, just gonna drop. Knife him. Right out front. Yeah, three, oh, two, one. Is running. And welcome, welcome everyone. We are excited to be here tonight. I know a lot of us may be not expecting this broadcast, but we are excited to be here on Esports U. I'm very excited to be here. My name is Ordo. With me is the ever so amazing and awesome Rare Adam. We are going to be casting some ECC, uh, ECC action as we have NYIT Blue coming up against Utica Esports. Both these teams semifinalists from last season. Going to be giving us a little bit of a run for our money. Rare Adam, how are you doing today? Doing pretty well. It's going to be an interesting matchup here, of course. Both of these teams making it to the semifinals last semester and trying to get a little bit more revenge, I want to say. Uh, both of them sort of fell to Malloy University along the way in some way, shape, or form. But with Malloy not participating in this semester, they're sort of here for a, a revenge tour here. And Utica especially, you know, they came into those playoffs as the seventh seed. They came in as massive underdogs and were given a lot of teams to run for their money. So curious to see if they can perform in this semester and sort of make it get to that apex and try and get to that ecc championship they're gonna try their hardest because you always want to start off the season on a good foot and you want to give a good show right you're on stream you want to have some fun here i'm very excited to see what they can do but of course we do have to take a look at some of the maps because my gosh everyone knows it everyone loves it some of us hate it we see the maps coming out here i see two that are obviously banned away and then the ascent and pearl being locked in for a second but i mean adam you are a little bit upset about our decider map here <laughs> I mean, th the main thing is that I feel like it is omnipresent that for the last, well, I mean, ever since Split was taken out of the pool, we got the same three maps in all of these collegiate things. It was always <laughs> Bind, Ascent Haven, Bind, Ascent Haven, Bind, Ascent Haven. And then Bind is just removed. They're like, you know what? You can't do this anymore. <laughs> We're going to force you to pick a different map. And I mean, getting Pearl is great. Getting Ascent, I don't mind the map as much. But Haven, again, man, come on. There's there's four other maps that we could have picked. And they're all banned away, of course. I just kind of want to get a taste of Lotus. I want to get a taste of casting Split. You know, those are some of the ones that, you know, selfishly, you're like, yeah, you know what? I want to try and see how those maps go from like the commentary perspective of course you play it in ranked and you kind of hate them both but regardless yeah. it, it's nice to see a little bit of a switch up with the pearl at the very least but overall a lot of the same maps especially week one you don't want to float too many crazy strats you want to sort of keep them for later on into the season yeah, and I will I will say that I'm just happy to see another three site, right? Like that's all I really care about. I love three site maps because it does force a little bit of ingenuity and it does bring out that fact of you do have to adapt a little bit more. You have to have more strategies because again it is three maps for a reason. So we're getting on away though, seeing some of the agents coming out here, and we are going to be hopefully very excited here. You can see the fade locked in for Joyce, which again I think is a more mainstay now, and some teams are actually fading away from it, pun intended. And they're saying we don't want it as much because you see some of those, you know, hey, we can cover what Fade does with two. I disagree with them. I like the Fade. I love seeing it here. But only one duelist really coming out for Utica. Yeah, you can just see the jet picked on both sides. And especially on Ascent where, you know, 
there's it's such an even map overall you know all these teams are so well versed on this map you know it's been in the competitive pool since you know competitive valent really started so you're really comfortable on this map and the jet just has so much room to work with mid is such an open area to sort of open up any sort of engages and both of the sites they're not too crammed in there either there's not too many corners and everything so jet really thrives in that situation but of course we have to talk about how the meta has sort of shifted in the last couple of months you know we saw so many chambers it was almost a necessary pick it was chamber on every single single map for these teams last semester but now this time around chamber is probably the worst agent in the game now which is <laughs> crazy to think about a game like valorant without chamber in it it's such a strange game at that but nonetheless you know opening it up for more killjoys opening it up for some different team comps to come through so you know the jet sort of taking over that op role both of these teams really want to lock that down and the killjoy gonna be sort of your main sentinel that you see on almost every map i think killjoy has one of the highest pick rates of course it's off through some of the sort of Mickey Mouse tournaments in between in the offseason and everything, Killjoy was just sky high pick rate. Everyone was picking her up. And honestly, for good reason, she's incredibly strong right now, locking down a site both on attack and defense. Mm -hmm. It's so, I, and I love it, right? Because in the past, I feel like Killjoy wasn't utilized as much. Like you did see a Killjoy, right? In, in at, Back then, fewer agents to select from. But I love the fact that she's come into such prominence, right? It's such a mainstay now. It's like, you have to run a Killjoy. You have to have the utility. You have to have so much available. You can see it here. It is the new Cypher. It is that new, we are just gonna, or I want to say new old, but it's holding down a singular site, which is allowing this kind of push here. Very, very quick coming out of NYT, though, as they are aggressing onto this A site. A quick lockdown, a quick drop of the doors means that they get a very nice plan, and Utica have to regroup. Yeah, sort of taking a split approach in through there but look at this it's five members all trying to look for this retake no blood has been shed quite yet but obviously just sort of finding their angle salty gamer though there one enemy remaining oh those little deeks the salty gamer coming out here saying give us a chance anchor said not just yet anchor the last one staying alive here Gonna be some problems as you're tucked away with 14 HP. You're gonna try and teleport. Might get one more frag. You cannot. IDK board said, I'm bored of this. Let's go to round number two. Yeah, just a clean execute. Five members strong pushing in onto that site. And it's not too hard to retake on Ascent overall, but especially when you're just down in numbers from the get-go. It's really hard to find your 1v1s in that situation. So many angles already being held. And you know, NYIT having a very clean round, you know, even if you're losing the pistols, is not the biggest deal. But even still, Salty Gamer are going to be rich there. 3 0 and 0 already. Everyone's up and for that Spectre. Another change that happened recently is that, you know, Stinger Force Buy not going to be showing up as much. It did get more expensive, a little bit more damage drop off. So it's just going to be normal classics. We're going to get back to the old meta of round three. You're going to get your full buys in instead of, you know, round six or seven because everyone's buying Stingers in between. I'm so sad. Like, those are the fun days, right? Yeah. Seeing that rush out of, like, SMGs versus SMGs, and you're just like, I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be great, but not going to happen anymore. It is going to be that tango of death as Utica. Again, the 50-50 uh, guess of where the opponent's going to go. And needless to say, they call it, but are calling themselves off of it. Instead, they say, hey, we're going to rotate back. We're going to send four back to defender spawn and try and keep ourselves ready in case we do have to rotate and not get caught in that situation however the gamer Ooh. takes a swing doesn't look well actually look but looked over chaser who gets a free kill and is not going to get a free weapon that's a crucial pick or not there because <laughs> didn't quite pick it up as you mentioned it's a good pickup but look at this just holding angles here idk board sort of playing tango here with the ko doesn't oh. quite catch the Ooh. oh <laughs> chaser chaser gets away with daylight robbery right there like that should have been a death yeah, that was brutal, and now five members strong from Utica just piling out through heaven, and this Killjoy is not even on site yet. It's 5v2 effectively. They're just going to take the fights quick. I'm going to try and force it. HT07. Saying, all right, we're good. We're going to hang on. In comes that sweep, and again, with the picked up Spectre, nailed him down. Ethan going to lay one down and hope to get a bit more. Again, the Nano Storm going to try and delay him, but it's not anchored to fuses. If that's the kill, Ethan is able to grab two things to the Nano Storm, making it a 3k there. But they didn't get the defusal, and now it finally goes through. They did lose three, but either way, it's a 3 round win for them. They will take that Utica and tie things up. Yeah, and you know, we talked about how, you know, it was not full buys going back and forth for you know, five, six rounds with the Stinger meta, but this time around, it seems as if that's still going to be the case, you know. Instead, NYIT not quite going to have enough to buy up once again for themselves. It's going to be Spectre is sort of forced as 
they're trying to keep their economy sort of in check, but even still, you're now going up against Guardians, you're going up against the Vandal, you're going up against a close-range Judge here from Anchor that you know, is not quite a full buy, but it's definitely a more significant buy on the side of Utica, where they can hold their angles, they can hold these longer ranges, and now you're putting yourself in a pickle if you don't win this Spectre course. NYIT going ahead, it's pretty hard here, Ooh. but Chaser reads it. Took three seconds, popped, and Salty Gamer felt that pain. 20 HP, and they regret ever dancing along that B side. Just wondering if they can rotate back. No one's on you their flank, run. no one's coming from the attacker side, so they could get around. But no, they are now doubling down. Attacker lockdown goes in. Chaser is going to drop a few little swarms of their own. A couple of nades coming out here. HTO7 waiting around the corner is going to get locked down. You have to chase, you have to do something, and you whip your knife out instead. Salty Gamer says, ha ha, thank you very much for that one. They don't detain anyone, but they get the kill. 45 retake. Of course, the weaponry advantage still going to be in favor here of Utica. just if they can hold the door on that one as well. Ethan holding this long angle. Nice shots coming down, but my goodness, here comes the weaponry advantage coming down. One enemy mm -hmm. remaining. That was uh, by far the clearest weapon yeah. <laughs> like advantage that we've seen, right? And, uh, and it works. They carry over three, very nice hold, and you can see they grab the Guardian again. They go ahead and grab a Vandal, so Anchor able to save that Vandal over. Needless to say, they're going to be working with a decent chunk in their economic tank, because Utica have won two in a row, stolen away NYIT's power for the time being. At least from that first round, you know, normally Pistol will automatically transfer into your anti-eco, into your bonus round, and potentially beyond that. But in this situation, you to kind of sort of flip the script there. And all off the back of Chaser, on that classic, just finding a couple kills up through mid, and that sort of really turned the tables. It was Ethan sort of slow to turn back around on the rotate. And while they did get that lockdown on around three extremely early, it still doesn't quite lead to that round victory. And now Utica, with a lot of money still in that inventory, able to afford potentially another full buy if this round doesn't go their way. They're gonna still have that economic advantage against the likes way. of NYIT, but Jet Ult might turn the tables here. Always very scary to see how that works out here because those knives, so lethal. They're lethal if they hit the right bodies. I mean, I've yes. seen a couple people drop, you know, two or three knives and they think they get the kill and you're just like, oh, nope. Uh, yes, and you did see that. That was fall damage. I just want to point out. Nah, Salty Gamer ate 15 us. points of fall damage. Uh, welcome to Valorant and Jets. I, I, I still love the fact that that's actually a thing, by the way. It's so yeah. funny to watch. It's the only time it'll happen, too. Okay, well, the fall damage doesn't matter because Salty Gamer drops Valley like a hot sack of potatoes, slices through him to make french fries, and opens up this corridor. HTO7 wants to try and hang, and you are nice oh. help, and HTO7 wins it. Are you going to get two? No way you get two. You do! It is again the Unica difference as they wash through NYIT. And Ethan with his bulldog just trying to find anyone that they can. Is going to be able to find the head. Oh, hey. is going to be able to shut down Chaser as well. That was a little bit tight. But still, where is the spike? It is completely surrounded by Utica members. At the very least, it's either going to be a save on the bulldog or maybe picking up a vandal somewhere or just going to be holding on to that bulldog and not trying to look for anything. I don't think there's any way that left. Ethan's able to find any more kills here. Nope. Just... <laughs> Just praying to hang on to this gun. Just like, can I hang on to this? Can I make it out? Still going hunting. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Around the corner they go, Ooh. and you do okay. You found Joyce, and you upgrade your gun. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ethan was on the wrong side of that turret. Thankfully, it timed out, and you survived, but that would have been a funny way to die right at the end. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Utica still get their round. It is sort of a caster curse. And yeah, no way he's upgrading that gun. And then he upgrades it. He finds a kill regardless. <laughs> but nonetheless, you know, Utica feeling very strong in their economy. You can still see it's mixed buys coming through from NYT. They just refuse to full save, right collect, and get back a full buy on the next round. So it's, you know, a couple of sheriffs, a stinger coming through, and then two vandals. It's just mixed economy all over the place for NYT. And now there's an op down mid from Valley. Spots out the Sova, but... Is it going to take that shot and that could be to their detriment? They know the op is now looking down mid. Now they definitely do. Oh, yeah. uh, if, if they didn't know with the 100% peak ratio that was there, 
they now have about 150%. Uh, they know the op is there. And because of that, they're still holding. Utica say it doesn't matter. We now shut off this angle of sight. And because of that, you're now forced to the sides. You're now forced into B main and A, uh, A main as well. So it's a good idea. I like that call. Well, the question is what are NYIT going to do, right? And how they're kind of stuck here waiting for their moment. They're going to block off line of sight in A and going to try and teleport right back. So a little bit of dance, but needless to say, it baited out board. So Visor, Visor baited their own teammate to death. Now Salty Gamer trying to push on, gets shut down by HTO7 as Killjoy has just been a stalwart, but Visor's already on site, Ethan finds another one! Welcome to Kill City, NYIT starting to wake up here, another lockdown by Ethan, Ethan that is two in five rounds, and welcome to the swing, Valley getting dropped. Attacker lockdown now fully completing, no one's detained, it's now down to a 2v3, can Utica pull this off? I mean, we see them do some crazy stuff. We see them win some fights that they probably shouldn't have. Once they pulled this one off. That would be a huge win for them, being able to take away the lockdown and dropping NYIT. They're going to hold here, Pizza. A little bit of a lob. Joyce saying that should be enough. That should give us a chance. The haunt now being destroyed. Nanostorm on the left side. Because of that, you are now vulnerable. Eyes are open. You're trying to spray, but you don't get anything. Still waiting. I'm still enough of the dude decided to chase and now they spot someone in the back of Boathouse and Visor with the two swings is going to pick up that one with an assist. Chaser, now you're just waiting. You're waiting for people to exit. You're going to hope for some exit frags. You get one. You're going to possibly get a second. Nope, you got 12 HP. Uh, you killed Ethan, so at least you got that one. I'm not sure if they saved the op out of it. Doesn't believe I don't believe they did. It's still sitting in market, but a really good hold coming through from the side of NYT. Yes, it's a little bit messy on the way out, but honestly, a very strong execute. Yes, they were trading anchor or anchor got a kill onto IDK board on that A site, but the full execute onto the B site sort of caught them off guard. Got a little bit of a timing difference there, it worked out in their favor. But Utica, as you mentioned, still have a lot of funds in that bank account. Granted. A lot of them sort of going into this operator as well. It's a judge now picked up for anchor once again. I believe there's a specter picked up. So these sort of mixed econs. Everyone's just full buying every round with whatever they got. And they're just hoping it works. It's the full send strategy. You full send, you don't care where it lands. And, and maybe you get a good score. You don't know. It's oh, it's we don't care. And I like it. That will draw. Uh -oh. Valley! Valley drops. Ethan, now the, the A side is now being overrun. Let Yagami has to spin around to take out Anchor. Yagami is not going to fall back. Salty Gamer is able to drop Chaser, who is inside of that null command. Blind shot by Valley doesn't land this time, and it gives time for Visor to swing in on HD 7 Let Yagami going to get the plant down as the rest of the team puts down suppressive fire. And needless to say, you are now in a 4v2 as Chaser gets timed out. I mean, especially with this jet on the op. You know, you don't have much to buy up afterwards. Are you going to try and look for these fights? It has the Vandal, but oh. he doesn't quite have the angle. Ooh, Ooh. find one, though, Valley. Valley making it work. Joyce ready to go with a couple blinds as well. It's supposed to go down, and it gets time. Valley gets a 3k. What a great diversion. The team playing in sync. Now you got to clear out underneath. And you do. Joyce able to fire from long range. And now Visor's the last one standing. This is a turnaround. This is a nasty moment to have. And Visor, unfortunately, TP straight into the nightfall. But it still works. Visor able to get the headshot. Oh, one more. You tap it. It's a clutch up by Visor. A turnaround to turnaround to clutch. Visor ties things up. I don't know where the second secret was. I think they might have used that on the fade already. Joyce, looking the wrong way. A really good teleport right as the Omen ult came down and just sort of caught Joyce napping and then able to secure that up. The nice open plant from the Sova to open up that round from Light Yagami means they're able to sort of close it out for themselves. And NYT, however they can by any means necessary, are able to find themselves a third round. And we're tied up in this first quarter, and now it's going to be a full save coming through from Utica. Finally, sort of good fortunes have run out. They do not have the fortune's favor in their hands. The fortune does favor the bold, and maybe they got too bold. There, There is a limit to the boldness. Oh! oh. And they were too bold there, but Joyce able to trade it up. You know what? You'll take that. In the current system and in the current situation, you're very happy about a one-for-one -one trade. You go ahead, pick up their Vandal, and now you're going to rock it. But a quick plan by NYIT is forcing this round to move very quickly. Valley with the knives out. All five ready to go. Sweeping out all corners. Getting ready for this engage. 
We take down a work nice out. You hit every single one in the lamppost. The lamppost ain't a player because of that. Salty Gamer gets a headshot. Looking for a bit more. Addy K board is bored of anchor. Anchor is dropped. Ethan swings with a 2k. And it's all headshots galore. NYIT put the pain down on top of Utica. Yeah, just great round. They play incredibly quickly. Yes, Visor gets a little bit too fun with it staying way far back trying to see what they can find but it doesn't end up paying out it's just one vandal that they lose and they have more than enough to buy back up utica of course sort of just going in with whatever they had a whole bunch of sheriffs you know a marshal in there as well just trying to find whatever kills wow. they could they have the credits to sort of go for the full buy and once you believe it round eight is when we get our first for full buy from both of these teams it's sort of been a <laughs> hodgepodge since then but you know we said stinger meta might you know it getting nerfed might take this out of it now nah, it's just finally you get full vandals coming down so curious to see how this full gun round works out and i think this timeout is well placed by utica they want to sort of slow it down they've lost three rounds in a row they just want to say hey listen we've got ourselves on a full buy once again we've got ourselves on even footing let's show that we are the better team let's out skill them let's out aim them let's out execute them of course, and the funny part as well is, uh, I love how you were saying, you know, at the beginning, well, you know, those uh, those stingers aren't in place, so we're not going to have any issues getting to the full gun rounds and all that fun stuff, and and here we are, we finally get it, and so it, it has come to fruition, we are seeing that timeout, and we hopefully see Utica utilize it to perfection, this was their timeout, I do want to point that out, they fell behind in, uh, in a couple, they lost three in a row and said it's time. It's time to go ahead and take a look at what we've been doing and how we can turn it around. They have a single lockdown on their favor. Visor has a teleport on the other side. Same with the null command. So NYIT do have the functionality to just chase in. The problem is they got to keep their members alive. Salty Gamer gets taken out by their mirrored on Valley. That's a great pick to have at the start. And I mean, Valley had a little bit of a slow start to the game at one point, you know, one and six, but that has picked it up in the last couple of rounds and definitely starting to fulfill that duelist dream of, you know, being your top frag, being that sort of stalwart for your team, finding the kills when necessary. And already finding a pick against NYIT here is good for Utica, you know, on this defensive half with how even Ascent can be. Any picks are good picks, you know, you're going to have that numbers advantage and then you can start to work the map, open it up a little bit more. But of course, Ethan having the third lockdown of the half quite get it off they're gonna have to wait eight seconds for that one feels bad uh feels kind of bad <laughs> <laughs> really bad it always sucks yeah. you got your ult out and you're like ah, i want to drop this down we'll finally get it down but now it's gonna have to wait it out it's not a perfect ult though you can see in the very back corner of boathouse there might be a little bit of a peak angle for someone to stay that's exactly where valley's gonna sit Oh, he's gonna sit in. They're gonna chase in, and Ethan able to swing on Valley. Oh, that boathouse did not sit pretty with Valley. That's a painful one. The plant goes down. IDK board waiting around the wings, and this is a perfect setup. Again, you can take a look at the chase coming in from Utica. They are flooding in from defender side as well as Pizza. I don't know if they're gonna have the opportunity to clear as many angles they would like. I think there's a bit of recon. The information is not really given, so they're going to force. They are going to force here, and Chaser is able to find one. Meanwhile, Visor's in the blade. Chaser has cleared out sight. Chaser got in because of that. Visor has to push. You are blind, though. You are not swinging as blind as bad. Oh. And you swing for two. Visor, you can't do it twice in a row. That is not legal. You're not allowed to. Joyce puts them down. They do get the win, but my Ooh. gosh, did it look messy. Yeah, two HP left on Joyce. It there were so many smokes on site, so many sm smokes through short there, uh, that little angle, and that's exactly what sort of worked to Visor's favor briefly until Joyce is able to turn it around, put the nail in the coffin there, and Utica able to even it out. That timeout ends up paying dividends as they are able to secure the round, but it is a costly round. Valley goes down, HTO7 went down, Eve Anchor went down as well, so it's going to be a little bit more costly than I think they want. It was Chaser who went down at the end there. Nonetheless, still going to be some pretty significant buys coming down in this round now. We're able to pick it up once again. NYT are on the back foot of their economic situation, so very curious to see how the economy game goes back and forth, especially with only four rounds remaining. You know, mm -hmm. if you were able to rattle off a flawless round, you can carry that economic advantage right up until the half, and the difference between 8-4 and 6-6, six, six, and of course 4-8 the other way, is just absolutely massive on a map, as even as a set. Gotta wait and see how they do it, but right now Valley is still popping off. You called it earlier, slow start, but the oh! start is good. Visor has been on one as well, and has been tearing through some of these opponents. Looking for a bit more, gonna throw out 
A bit more information gathering as Light Yagami is going to scout out this A site. No one's on site. But that can be a double-edged sword. You say no one's on site. And because of that, we want to rotate out. We are now going to chase on the B site. Because Utica may have given up site willingly. Wow. And they get a free other site. So this is a big brain play by Utica if that's what they were doing. And they're going to... Or not Utica. And NYIT. This might... This works. But the problem is they only have one on site. So this collapse might be painful. But look at the angle Ethan has, you know, just sort of sitting here, the knife already thrown onto Boathouse, so it only detects the omen, all just flooding through the exact same way. They've done this strategy multiple times, but look at where IDK board is behind enemy lines and market. Let's see if they can make something happen. Think of the smokes once again. Denying any sort of vision. In goes another recon bolt, and Ethan is able to swing on anchor. So it's a very quick pick. Ethan gonna look for a little bit more hiding on this edge, waiting for the team to go. Visor hiting inside the smoke as well. And now gonna teleport to safety as ET07 take out Ethan. Oh! For the swing, Visor! The TP from the Omen! Oh my gosh! Visor made it happen, allowed the rest of the team to clean up. This Omen, the plays by the short range teleports are nasty. Visor literally just looked HT07 in the eyes and said, Yes, we got to Like, look at this, look at this, right here. HT07 just staring <laughs> right at the zone. He's like, Oh, oh, I'm in trouble. Joyce gets tapped right after. Fantastic play from Visor. Time and time again is able to find these angles that are just absolutely ridiculous. And we talk about the economic advantage. That is exactly what is coming into play here. It's pistols and sheriffs once again for the side of Utica. Sixth round almost guaranteed at this point, and now it's going to be round 11. You've got to buy up once again. Are you able to find your footing there? But even then, still full buys potentially back the opposite way. NYT have more than enough economy to push through until the end of this half. Or a miracle or anything like that. Anything crazy. <laughs> you know, don't don't want to get, you know, knock on wood, all that sort of stuff. We've already cursed it, I think, twice this game, so it's like, okay, okay <laughs> we won't worry. Uh, what happens, though, when you get to try and blind an owl drone? Uh, that. Uh, that goes, yeah. uh, the phage is dying in a heap of un unrivaled glory. And now we're going to take a look. HT07 winning around the wings. Hoping someone decides to take a chance and you get the right click. But nope, and I need more than I oh, found oh, oh. you. And now running phase through Salty Gamer Barrel Stuff's anchor. And that puts it at a 4v1. Utica, of course, playing with the low brow budget buys. Spike planted. And needless to say, they're doing the best that they can. Value sitting on a vandal in the footsteps of the Visor. Visor's gonna have a good time. Picks up another kill, and then so far, I at least think so, has consistently gotten at least two kills per round, except some of the earlier ones. Yeah, you know, it's been Ethan and Visor consistently at the top there. Even when NYT were dropping some rounds in the first little bit there, when after their force on round two sort of struggled a little bit to get the footing going, it was honestly Ethan and Visor keeping the cool, it feels like keeping the team's hopes up and everything. And now you can see their scores, you know, 14, 12 frags apiece got more than everyone else in this game by a significant margin. And if they can continue that momentum pushing through into that second half, you know, Scent is one of those maps where you just want to get that momentum. You want to get the momentum going as quickly as possible. And Bowie's going to try and do that by rushing forward. Got to seal it back one way or another. And because they push so hard, force a back from the rest of NYIT. Oh! And look at that. It's so good. Utica forced NYIT to take up poor position, and they knew it. It was a great call out by Utica, and they clean up the mid. Because of that, they now flood into a... It's a 5v3 with multiple ultimates, by the way. If they just want to lay a lockdown in, they would get some work done. But instead, Visor once again gets a headshot on Valley, and he's going to TP back to the box. There it is. That's what I was wanting, you know. Drop the lockdown, force them to play, and they're going to drop the Nightfall as well. Every single piece of utility saying, hey, we know where you are, has forced the entirety of NYIT to back away. Except for one. Except for one, four, four. The same player. And when Visor goes down, the rest fall as well. Good defuse there. Joyce will clean up with the 3k. It looks half. like Utica might be able to tie things up in the first half. Yeah, they show a little bit of life right at the end of there, of course. The knives getting popped by Salty Gamer, a little bit of an interesting move. Not sure if that was intentional or not. Might have been a misclick because it already seems sort of doomed at that point. But nonetheless, doing what they can to sort of push forward that advantage. No, 
NYT still have that economy to buy back up. It's going to be another full buy to end off this half. It really just depends if Utica can take that pressure that they were, they were able to exert. You know, it was just a rush forward from Valley through B main right into mid, able to find a couple kills that really turned the tables for the side of Utica. And we'll have to see if they potentially do that again. This time, though, sitting a little bit more patiently up catwalk as... By the looks of it, it's just a 4-1 split. They want to push towards this A site once again. They've been able to consistently get onto A site. It's just a hold that has been a little bit of a struggle. There goes the lockdown, though. It's used on the opposite side. This is just baiting everyone towards B. It's a bait, but it might get another kill. Valley on the other side is going to take Salty Gamer. Ethan going to drop Chaser into that null command status. And it was such a good bait. It works in their favor. NYIT gonna try and fight back, oh. but Visor goes down. Visor is a huge piece of this attacking side, so NYIT lose their main uh, main fragger. HT07 is gonna pick up Chaser, and it's now a 5v2, so Utica, with the slower play, give themselves a massive advantage. Yeah, and it was a 1v4 bait on one side of the map. You would expect it to play out, but instead, just going all the way of Utica here, trying to tie this half as quickly as possible. It is IDK board against the world. If they, 30 seconds left. They don't have the spike. It's stuck on site. IDK board is just in deep. It's also the last round of the half, so I'm wondering what IDK board is waiting for. Um. Oh, that's a teleport. Oh, anchor. Is anchor still there? No, that was just a peek. Okay, that's the finisher. Joyce. Finishes it off. It is a flawless round for Utica as they tie things sides. up six to six. Just like the first half never mattered. We are back to ground zero. It all depends on how the flip side of this equation works out, you know. All evens through the half, while it was a little bit streaky from both of these teams. I mean, we see NYIT, they have what is that? Five of the last eight rounds going their way. Utica sort of picking up the ends of them at that. It just depends on if they can lay down the law in this second half. If they're going to be able to switch up the strategies and sort of catch the other team off guard. Because thus far, Go they've on, shown man. how even they can be. Ethan and Visor, of course, showing up as big performers. But now Joyce, Anchor, Valley has, have definitely picked it up as well for themselves. And it just depends on if they can perform as well or better on the flip side of the map. Of course, it also depends on, you know, what teammates are going to step up. We saw a little bit of a difference between the side of NYIT and their top and lower fragger for this game, Utica are a bit closer in average, right? So that does lead to the fact that right now Utica are just playing a little bit cleaner. And they're showing it here as well. On the attacking side, drop two in the early pistol round, looking for at least a few more, and the Omens are gonna meet head to head. Anchor wins that duel. Ethan is gonna win against Valley and open up this B side. So wins in different locations, but at the end of the day, Utica coming out in a 4-2, making another, hoping for a 4-1, and they do. They catch Light Yagami in the head, and with that, it's Ethan left alive with 10 HP. This should be the round for Utica. It is. They now move to 7-6 and six in the second half. Yeah, honestly, a really well-played round in Chaser on this Classic. Something's just different about the Chaser Classic. They've gotten like four or five kills with the Classic this game out of the 10 total. Pretty ridiculous. I mean, living there with 12 HP, picking up that last kill onto Light Yagami as well before Ethan, of course, was just lamb to the slaughter. But nonetheless, you know, the attack worked out quite well. They took that mid control. They pushed forward as a team and just sort of spread out across the map, found their 1v1s and won almost every single one of them. The only one that wasn't one was Ethan, who was left with 10 HP. I mean, the rest is history there. Just not able to find a miracle of their own. 1v4 with a classic, it's, it's already going to be tough, even when you've got 100 HP. It's a quiet start here to this 14th round. Definitely one of the slower-paced ones as well, right? I, I think we've seen action across the board most of the time. I think this is the first time the teams have really sat there and gone, do we, do we actually want to take this right now? And honestly, it's a good shift, you know. Yeah. If Utica want to sort of switch up the strategies, if they want to sort of define their own play style, play a little bit slower, look for your picks first, let NYT get a little bit too anxious, let them burn some util. We heard a flash go down, we've seen some smokes come down from the Omen as well, who's just sitting in them. There's a KO knife as well being used, I don't think it scanned anyone, so you're going to see now they're willing to drop that XP. Uh -oh. Everyone sitting in this smoke is going to the Omen. Oh! <laughs> We saw it. We knew that was coming, Adam. We knew oh, no. that was going to come out and blow up in their face. And you know what? With the short buys, NYIT 
are gonna be looking at happy visor does it again that's two normally you don't get two kills spread out like that normally it's just a two pump it's done almost got a third hto7 is gonna survive and not any longer as ethan runs him down holy crap I mean, Chaser's got the best gun out of all of them, though. He doesn't need one tap to both of these members. Can actually get the collat as well. There's 52 health between the two of them. Chaser, though, just made a single footstep, and that might be the difference. I think that knife scanned anyone either. This is so tense from Chaser. Can he clutch out the round? We've seen people do it before. It, we've definitely seen people do it before. But with the Guardian, you got to tap, tap fast. Both low HP, you look up, and you get the stop! No way! No! Chaser clutches! <laughs> Chase, it almost seemed as if it was predestined there. You know, had a great <laughs> angle from heaven, was full health, had the full shield still intact, just able to find those two members. One shot each is all he needed, and... Man, it was close there. NYT gave them a run for their money, and now it forces this bonus to be not really a bonus and more of a save round, if anything, for the side of Utica. So NYT now have a little bit more of an advantage back in their favor. It just depends on how the execution comes down, because each and every time Utica get a little bit of an advantage, it seems as if NYT have something to get themselves a back into it. And this is very aggressive. Oh, my. Never mind. Utica are just cracked. What what is up with these teams randomly swinging to like really hot streaks and then really cold streaks or just it, it doesn't even feel like a cold streak. It feels like they're one up one upping each other each time, right? It feels like every time they're just like, eh, we'll snap a bit further like this, right? IDK board apparently woke up from a slumber and said, Let me just two tap people real quick. This is gonna be great. I get two headshots, walk away, and I did my job. Vice is like, I didn't even have to do anything this time. Again, they do have the weapons, I understand that, but still, this is these teams cannot decide who wants the angle better. Uh, Salty uh -huh. Gamer hears someone, I think saw a little bit of a shoulder. Oh my. And needless to say, the judge is going to do a lot more damage from that close range. HD07, he got a pistol. You better hit the headshot. Ooh. There it is. Oh my god, no! That, that HD07 did, did him dirty. Yeah, that, that didn't look normal, but I think that's just the angle that we were sitting at there. Just barely <laughs> glances the head there. Probably just took the ear off of the jet there, if anything. But nonetheless, that's enough of the head to pick that one up. And now, 3v3 onto the site. Utica with planted. a terrible buy, I want to say, is somehow in an advantageous position. They're able to pick up rifles for themselves now. It's a marshal, a judge, and a vandal. Sounds like a, the beginning of like some bar joke or something, but it might just <laughs> right. be enough here. Because NYIT, you know... Not a whole lot of health on IDK board. They're just trying to spray up. They find HD07 actually. And now, Jimmy 3 to judge though. Oh! <laughs> Anchor set him to the oh. bottom of the ocean. Oh. It does it with three. Welcome to the judge zone. Oh my god. Utica are ridiculous right now. They said we tied it up at the half. And then no more. Look at this. This is ridiculous. The spray through earlier by Visor was great. I just had to give props there. And then this. One, two, three. And then jump dead. That was that was the best case scenario you could have asked for. Anchor holds it down, pushes through three in a row, and just like that, NYIT have no econ to work with. On the flip side, you could have all the Ehon to work with. They're rolling <laughs> yeah. in the bucks right now. They've got at least another full buy, if not more, in the inventory, potentially. If you know, a miracle happens on the opposite side, and if they are to convert on this buy round once again, or this bonus round at that, this is just bonus with rifles at this point against all the sheriffs, you know, that's going to push their economy even further. So curious to see how NYIT want to play this out. It looks like they're trying to peek some angles, but Anchor has already spotted one out. IDK board, though, is in wine here. That can be a very dangerous spot. Might catch Anchor off guard if they have to do right. So far, no one's testing it. Oh, Anchor. All right, so IDK board swung out. Oh. Anchor did some work last time. Now, not with a judge. A little bit better oh. single shot, but the blinds on both ends means Anchor can play safely. Oh! And the teleport! Visor does it again. Visor needs to stop doing this, by the way. That is the third time we have been tricked by his teleport. He has been a monster. HCO7 holding it down on the speed site. They're gonna try and collapse in on Visor, who now teleported on the back end. And HCO7 enjoys. Lock them down. Visor, you are done. You are hooked up. And they leave him.
They leave them. They say, we got the detain. We know where you are. And we will plant on our own. Whether that was intentional or not, Utica are going to get the plant down at A. Not C. What am I saying? They find the kill anyways at the end of it. But I mean, <laughs> it, I was perplexed. The spike was just sitting randomly in spawn at like 30 seconds left. And they're locking <laughs> down B site. And then all of a sudden they get the one detained because he can't get a walk the meander over, find the orb. You know, Chaser has the ult now online. Joyce has their ult online. And Utica... It was scrappy. It definitely wasn't clean by any means, but you know, a win's a win. You're up to 10 rounds now. If you look at that economy, it is just plentiful for the side of Utica. And NYT, they've got to make something happen. You know, might need to dig deep and look for potentially that second time out oh. along those lines. But Salty Gamer and close. Oh, man. Oh, no. Oh! Oh my god, Salty went for it. Swung on two, but the rest of the team is there. Utica said, not today. Light Yagami gonna snap up Anchor's head. Joyce picks up Chaser. Gets time for Ethan to get right in front, but you're currently suppressing. You came out of the shadows with the gun barrel sticking out. It is Utica to wash over NYIT. And a headshot by Joyce finishes off one of the fastest rounds we've had here tonight. Yeah, and it's the dichotomy that comes through from Utica. They play slow, they play slow, they play slow, and then they just hit you with a fast round. 20, 30 seconds total there at the end of it. I mean, Joyce just finishes it off by landing the headshot through the wall, through switch, all the way into market. Just yeah, might as well have a little bit of a style point at that one. And now 11 rounds. Utica have been flawless on this attack, and NYT, they've been stumped. They have no answers at this point. It's an operator now coming through from Salty Gamer, but no shields means that they have to be oh so careful. It's force rifles coming through with those light shields and the sticker. It is not a clean buy. That's not clean when they start the round either. Oh, man. I, I honestly would have preferred them to save, but Light Yagami might be salvaging this round. Is currently suppressed, but already got the util out, and it's down to a 3v3. Salty Gamer's here, ready to go. Already used the dash, though, and not going to get a second charge out of that one. So, IDK board looking for a wraparound. This could be the aggressive play that they were looking for. Whoa. But you have your gun out, and you get sprayed down. 65 HP, but they did it. And my IT have leveled the playing field. Sweet and I was not expecting this at all, but a teleport. Ooh. Look at that teleport. Anchor pulls out a visor special and said, I'm in your base. You better come check. IDK board. IDK board looking. Oh, Joyce with the better headshot. Yeah, and actually, Anchor just used that to pick up the spike. They left the spike and spawn, and then just the ulted to pick that one up. Light up in heaven, gonna get blinded up. But it's effectively a 2v1 on site. Salty Gamer is so far away. Will we hear the footsteps coming down, though, Joyce? Needs to be careful. Still has all of that util as well. And they walk through. They're going to give advantage. And Anchor finds it. Anchor heard it. Oh, my gosh. Great play by Anchor. Anchor clutching up there. Not even really clutch up. Had the backup there. But they do it. They take over NYIT, who sacked their last set of econ. They said, we're all in. On the second to last round, we lost it, and now we're in another precarious position. Yes, you're able to pick up some weapons, but it might not be enough. I mean, I'm looking at the three ultimates that they have, and Light had that Sova ultimate. Potentially, you're able to clear out a little bit more of sight with that. Jet used her knives there after she picked up that operator, and while she picked up a kill for herself, maybe saving the knives for this round might have been the play just in case, but of course... At the end of the day, Utica six rounds in a row on this attacking half. We talked about how even the map is. Utica say no, it's not even. We're just dominant. We're the better players. That's exactly what they've done. Yeah. Ethan, though, hiding in the smoke. There's just so yeah. much noise, and yet they have the discipline to hold. So the smoke go fading. Oh, Valley picks it up. It wasn't as clean as they would have liked. A lot of death right there, but they do it again. Anchor off on A said, I got another one, guys, and it's Visor. Remember, Visor has been the one for the side of NYIT that's been making plays happen over and over again. With Visor down, it feels a little bit insurmountable. The chaser that kills means IDK board gets sent to the gray screen. You're checking for your last two members, but they're so far away. Light Yagami better go dark here if you want to make this comeback. Salty Gamer, gonna try and sober up here, standing. and can't do it. Joyce, ready to go with another headshot. One more to go, Light Yagami gets one. One to start the ace, maybe? Oh man, maybe. what's this oh, angle? Peak. The peak, <laughs> nah, it was ready. Anchor finishes it off, and it is GG for game number one.
Uh, Utica just turned on a dime there. They were down six to four and then just got nine rounds in a row. They said, you know what? Time to put the big boy pants on. Time to yep. put the winner's jacket on. And they just rattled off nine rounds in a row. A fantastic close to that map. And Utica just picking up where they left off from last season as sort of underdogs, giving NYT a little bit of leeway. I said, hey, you can take you can take the reins for a little bit. And all of a sudden, they charge forth. They find themselves at that map one win. And very curious to see how map two plays out because as ascent is a very balanced map and we saw how they were just able to turn it on after halftime pearl might be a little bit different it is rather balanced but there are some different nuances it's a newer map of course as well so overall very intriguing to see how that first map played out because yeah it was not looking good for utica i think we can say <laughs> as wasn't. we're getting to halftime it, it wasn't looking bad. Let's make sure to state that. It wasn't looking bad. It was looking rough, right? They were down a little bit, uh, and then they came back hard. It wasn't like we were looking at, like, an 8-2 or something and going, like, okay, this is going to be a problem. But it was a struggle, and you said it, right? The flip was switched. Or I said that backwards. Anyways, <laughs> it was great to watch. I think both teams put up such a fight, and I can't wait to see what Pearl brings. We're going to go to a quick break. We're going to get the teams ready to go, and we will be right back with some more ECC action. Don't go anywhere. mirrors traditional sports in pretty much the same way you've got you know broadcasters you've got production people you've got marketing and sales and um, now nil and and things like that but um, really esports is kind of a great accelerator accelerator uh, for a lot of new businesses that are coming up in the metaverse and web3 and there's a lot of new technology that is going to be needed and so these, these STEM students that are also esports athletes are really the, the future workforce and leaders of tomorrow. And, you know, us as well as all of our brand partners that we work with really recognize this. And I think that's really, you know, a key driver of why brands are in this space. They want to be part of building that future workforce and leadership and shaping it and supporting it. So... Yeah, it's 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 very it's been a very interesting space to watch. And we, we offer such a big uh, you know we offer such a big counterpart to traditional sports also because when it's a counterpart but it's also the same is what I'm trying to say because it, it, when you're traditional sports and they're done after their two a day workout and they're done after their practice scrim they're coming home to play Call of Duty and relax and put their feet up and get a drink and play video games. It grows their brain, problem-solving skills, uh, and, and their hand-eye coordination while they're home. Hand-eye coordination, if you're a football player, massive skill, massive skill. Mm -hmm. So um, it helps build those things while they're off the field. And then for us, vice versa, if you're an esports athlete, one of the th errors I had growing up when I was competing in esports is that I was not active enough. I, I played sports, I competed a little bit, but I wasn't active enough truly when I look at it. So. That's one area that esports players can learn from in terms of activity and physical and the marrying of both. People say, oh, sports and esports, video games. Not really. We're just kind of the tech industry's competitive uh, form of um, competition as to where traditional sports are more physical hands-on. So I believe in the marrying of these two sectors and that they actually live together while also being counterparts. Well, I think I think then to speak to something about marrying, right, from traditional to esports, um, that to me speaks to this whole new thing at least again from you guys right you guys have more traditional sports background like paul leave mike um and all that but i think let's talk nil then because i think that's something that i think is really interesting that at least when i heard about it right of what we're trying to do with you know esports athletes schools programs in general um because it wasn't something you would think normally right you could understand right football player on the field star quarterback it makes sense right the guy is somebody that everybody knows on campus whether you're you know, whether you're on the team, off the team, or you're just going to the school, it makes sense. But I think, you know, nowadays it's it's not as common or people don't think that they could be somebody that their name is out there, right? Or that they know they're known, right? As as we're growing the space, as we're we're putting this together, it almost feels really interesting that, you know, star your star entry, you know, your star entry in Valorant or your your star forward on Rocket League, right? Whatever the case might be, now they can have NIL deals. It's a, it's a thing out yeah. there. And, and I think, I don't know, maybe Mike, you want to start off? But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, thank you for teeing that up. So uh, I was talking for too long. I, uh, I forgot to bring NIL into the mix. So it's a common occurrence, uh, occupational hazard. So I would say that, uh, so NIL for, for 
I'm sure most of you watching understand what it is, but NIL stands for name, image, and likeness. Name, image, and likeness, that term has been utilized to describe the transition of traditional student athletes, NCAA athletes, and their ability to monetize their name, image, and likeness. It went live July 1st, 20 of 21, and it has continued over the course of the last 14, nearly 14 months now. Uh, it's an interesting term because it's been co-opted to describe the NCAA's approach to student athletes being able to make endorsement money or uh, be able to monetize any part of their name, image, and likeness, but it's been around forever, right? We've had athletes endorsing brands for over 100 years. Babe Ruth of the New York Yankees was endorsing brands 100 years ago, and it has continued onward from baseball cards all the way through now where we have lots of different integrations of how uh, influencers can monetize their followings. So what I would say on the traditional side is it's still a very young space. There are a lot of stories out there regarding NIL that tend to focus on the negative or how out of control, I put in air quotes, it has gotten. But there is still a burgeoning marketplace for many more student athletes that are involved. About 17% of NCAA athletes are currently involved in NIL, but 65% more than that want to get involved and are curious how to get started. On the flip side, brands are challenged with a few different things in the space. There are 10,000 professional athletes in the United States. Once July 1st, 2021 hit, and you dump every NCAA athlete into that space, that's another half million. So brands that maybe didn't have a dedicated athlete strategy when there were 10,000, now have 500,000 plus that 10,000 to figure out how to activate who they are. That's a lot. I understand brands hesitancy in some instances, but I can tell you that companies like us are on a daily basis, educating brands and student athletes as to the software you can use, the types of activations you can get involved in, and how to utilize your followings. Or if you don't have to or want to be a social media star, are there ways in which you can monetize it? Now, I know I described that under the umbrella of the NCAA, but I see it as being no different in esports. I think there are massive opportunities for people with followings to be able to use that and connect with brands. I think a company like us can help you to do that. And then beyond that, we can make sure that those transactions are safe for you. I think there are opportunities, not just at the individual competitor level, but at the program level to have a sponsorship go to that. I'm sure some of you out there listening and watching already have deals like that in place, but I think we can continue to enhance, augment those deals and make them more comprehensive and make them, uh, first of all, I think, Product deals are perfectly fine, but I think we can get beyond that and grow some of these deals to a greater extent. Pauly, thoughts on that? Yeah, um, you know, you, what you said is right. So I'll put it in for layman's terms here for just the esports players because I talk to so many of our yeah. athletes that compete in our CECC series that are currently still in college. And basically what, what, what when Mike Blewett says NIL, what he's referring to is just sim very simple. If a brand or any sort of anyone wants to use your school's name, name or your name or your brand or anything with you, there is a deal for you that can be put in place, whether it's product deal, whether it's a paid endorsement, you can, whether you're a macro influencer or whether you're a micro influencer, you can be paid for your services. So uh, most of the people, when I talk to them, most of the, I won't say people, college athletes, they are, uh, you know, intimidated by the word. They don't really know what it means. They've never done anything with it before. And that's what it means. Any single time a brand or anyone at all wants to use your name or do a, a deal with you or do so, some sort of activation with you or your school, that's basically what the layman's terms, the NIL uh, meaning comes from. And uh, it, it's evolving in this space. There are so many brands that want to associate with micro and macro influencers uh, and just get people involved with their products or their services. So all of you, you know, collegiate athletes out there that are competing in esports, uh, very uh, keep. Not only are we trying to broker those deals, but also keep your eyes, ears open, and don't be shy or or scared to take these deals because that's what I've heard the most is that most of the time they're just scared to take them. They don't know what they are. They don't know if they're locking themselves into some agreement or terms that they're like going to give their name away or something too. So uh, this is a really important space and it's how you're all going to physically make money and build your brands along with company brands. So it's really important to learn. And my, my advice is to just get your feet wet. Don't worry about shying away, read the contracts, 
and take some of these deals because growing your own brand is the future of what our, our industry is going to be, in my opinion. Exactly. And if you follow in the, in the pro space, um, you'll see that uh, the pro teams are not only focusing on competitive play, but a lot of them are focusing on their brand and, and their cultural importance in the space. And so, you know, one of the things that we do also is help athletes build their brand, build their following. And that's part of what Pauly and Kyler are doing on their side when we do this behind the scenes training. And so, you know, building your brand, this is the creator economy. Uh, anybody and everybody can be anything they want to be. And so we just really want to be the conduit that supports that across the board. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and I think so. With that said, thank you everyone for, I think, for like, great insights in terms of for any of you that were watching this and maybe had questions about, you know, what is esports U? What is CSMG? Who are they? What are they doing? What are our plans, right? Well, you know, we, we, we know we kind of tried to make a bigger splash in the spring and we're excited to bring more stuff with you guys for the next year. But I think maybe as we close out here, I know we're, we're slowly approaching on time then, but maybe let's go around the room with everyone here of just what's one thing that we're all excited for for this next upcoming year. I know we touched on our plans and a lot of things, but if anyone had to speak, if you had to speak to just one thing, of just what has you excited for for us as a company, for us as the collegiate or college esports space, right? Uh, what's one thing that has all of you guys excited? And maybe we'll start with Mike, since our our traditional sports guy, and we'll let you like we'll let Mike speak. Sure. <laughs> sure. So uh, I would say many things on the traditional side, but I'll focus on esports. And I'd say the thing that I'm most excited about going forward is. After yet another year of us doing a round of events, I'm excited that more schools will understand exactly what we're doing with our regional uh, events and culminating in CECC and getting more schools involved. Uh, I think schools will be more excited to compete in our events because we've established it over the course of a year. And, and I welcome any and all conversations with getting people involved. I, I think for me, I'm most excited about like the schools and conferences Mike. that's that's amazing and that's so exciting i'm also excited about the brands that we're starting to be able to get involved in this in our uh commissioner's cup in last may we had over 14 brands blue chip brands participating in our event barbasol microsoft cdw morgan stanley new street Air Force. Um, and so I think brands are, are really starting to get excited about being involved in college esports. And we're offering them a platform that not only gives them, you know, a big event, a big yearly event, but also uh, regular daily programming where they can have exposure in, in front of this audience. Um, that they, they want to build affinity for with, with their brand. So I'm super excited about seeing the brands get on board and, and help grow the space along with us. A rising tide lifts all boats. And I think that's probably one of our, our mottos here at CSMG and Esports U. We're growing our brand, but at the same time, we're also really growing the college esports space as a whole. And that's our goal for it to be a healthy ecosystem for all parties involved. Yeah, uh, I, I, I agree there. And uh, I guess for me, uh, obviously always, you know, seeing the collegiate esports space elevate, um, uh, coming from a, a competing, this didn't exist when I was competing. And just to see it now in literally within the last five years, probably really come to fruition and start just blossomed out of nowhere and now becoming a space and seeing everyone, schools, players, uh, productions, companies all elevate together has been really, really nice to see. But if I was the most excited for one thing, it would probably be uh, the city where we're going to land for CEC uh, CC23. Um, I'm really excited to know where we're going to be. There's a lot of great cities. I mean, I, I personally would love for it to come to New York, despite whether we got a positive bid or not. I want it to come to New York, but uh, I just think the atmosphere – uh, in New York, when you throw an event here, it's just super magical, um, especially in the summertime. And But either way, I'm really excited to see where it lands. Tons of great cities, tons of great opportunities. And um, yeah, who knows? And, and I think that's going to be the most exciting uh, process for me. Absolutely. Um, 
I won't speak to anything. I think I, I, I'm filling Polly's job in this one because Polly's more a panelist than this one. So, <laughs> um, you know, normally, normally Polly's the host, and I, I don't know. I think I, I, me personally, I'll just say something real quick. I'm just excited to keep telling your stories. If you're a student, if you're a program, um, let me know. Let us, you know, reach out to us. We just ultimately, at the end of the day, we want to tell your story, and I think that's what has me most excited because now I think we're getting to a point where people know us. People, I hope you guys trust us. And, you know, um, and we just want to keep keep expanding and growing the space. So with that, uh, Polly, I won't make you do the weird thing where you got to toss to yourself <laughs> unless, unless you want to do that. I don't know. Actually, you, you, yeah, you might yeah. have a few way of doing this. Like, All right. you know, let's yeah. test it. Yeah. Okay. Right. How do you, you want to throw, throw it yourself here? <laughs> well, that's going to conclude here the future of Collegiate with S uh, CSMG and Esports U. Thank you so much to Angela, Mike Blewett, and Kyler Tandle for hosting our panel. And now back to myself for the day three of the CSMG uh, Coaches and Director Summit 2022. TTPS colon slash slash twitter.com slash septilence. Don't put that in. I'll get in trouble. So that's that's worth it. That's worth it. Did I get too close to the camera on that one? Too close. A little bit too close. Should too I should close. I oh should I back up a little bit? Okay, sorry about that. My bad. I've been awake for probably close to 32 hours. Like I have to like hold my keyboard like the normal way. Because if I do it, I feel like I have arthritis if I hold my keyboard like that. It blows my mind. I can never do that. Like, this kid this guy right here, he's got his keyboard like off at an angle. His isn't that extreme. There's a kid all the way down to the far end who has his keyboard all the way at like a horizontal. Yeah. That's really cool. They're gonna be at that table right over there. Public information? Oh, I don't know. But <laughs> this isn't live, so it doesn't matter. It's not live, but like you and I know. Yeah, we know. I'm not gonna tweet it. Awesome. What game do you play? Smash Bros. Who do you play? Is it embarrassing? Is it like Villager? Yeah. <laughs> is it Villager? Am I spot on? Oh my god. Is it the Ice Climbers? No. Is it Game & Watch? No. Is it Pichu? No. Is it Wario? No. I can keep going. I think I can name every character in the game. I believe in you. Did I say the Ice Climbers already? Yeah, you said them. Is it them? No. Is it them a second time? No. Okay. All right. Um, oh, is it one of the Lynx? Yes, it is. Is it Toon Link? It is. Oh, that is pretty embarrassing. Is that is rough. Who do you play? I'll give you $20 if you guess correctly right now. First try? First try. Give me a single hint. It's an obscure character. An obscure character. Not played very often. Is it We Fit Trainer? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> I'm the interviewer for a reason, baby. I do what I do. I don't need the money. I appreciate it, though. I appreciate it. Hi. So Bowser Jr., We Fit, and I... <laughs> I forgot already. <laughs> Are you all lying to me? Am I being gaslit? No, no, no. Bowser Jr., no, no, no. We Fit, and you told me already. Oh, uh, Toon Link. Yep. Where's my main support at? Fine. Who are we playing this weekend? Uh, a lot of Brig. A lot of Brig, really? Brig Lucio, probably. Brig Lucio, really? I shouldn't say that too loud. I don't want to give all your strategies. It's over under. What do you mean over under? Like, like, do we think we're going to podium? Do we think we're going to come in last place? Not last place. Not last place. Certainly not last place. What about like fifth place? That's doable. That's, that's doable? That's, that's winnable? Third place? They're, they're, mm, like, that's where that's where things get play, dicey. Play, play. That's very doable. Okay. First place. That's very doable. First place. Very doable. Love it. That's the mindset. That's what he loves to hear. Yeah. Oh my God. Hold on. Cut the cameras. Well, who are you? Hello. Oh my God. I saw you earlier. I saw the back of your shirt. And I was like, I was like, I know that name. I know him. It's a quick play game. They they Q snipe each other at land. I thought it was a scrim. It's just unlucky. Are you actually a villager player? Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about villager being notably worse in Smash Ultimate than they were in Smash 4? Uh, I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know? You never played Smash 4? No. Oh, that's all right. Nobody, nobody's going to hold that against you. Now, who do you play? I play Robin. Okay, wow. Did you know Robin has the lowest pick rate in the game? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Come on, the LEDs, it looks just like Samus. Huh? Do you disagree? I guess I can see. The Samus vibe. Show the controller to the camera. We're interviewing. This is recording, by the way. Surprise. Not my Who do you play? I play Peach. Oh, oh, wow, I like that. Who do you play? I play the Shotos, mostly Kazi. No, you lose against Kirby. Yeah, lose against Kirby. That's just like a statistics thing. Yeah. It's maybe. maybe. <laughs> this is a death match. I think they're all in the same one. They're all on Icebox. Are they, oh, are they, are they all in the same death match? Maybe. Who knows? I feel like none of them can hear me. I want to like approach somebody, but no one, no one can hear. They all have both their headphones on. What's up? How do we think we're doing? I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah. What's, what's your kitty? Uh, we're looking at 10 and 6 right now. Oh, hey, that's third, dude. That's better than I expected. Who's, who's bottom frag right now? I want to go talk to them. Ian? Hey, how do you think we're doing so far? Uh, you know, it could be better. Could be better? You one of those rough days? Well, you know. Let's go find more people to harass. And we are back, ready to go with game number two after a very short update, which Valorant so ever 
kindly decided to give it to us. We are ready to go with Pearl, a much anticipated map as it is definitely outside of the standard collegiate, I want to say world of map picks. So it's going to be interesting, especially with how Utica played game number one, had a little bit of rough time. Uh, you know, the throttle wasn't working as well as they like, but as soon as they hit that gas, they were off to the races. And Rare Adam, I think you said it best, nine rounds in a row. They just floored it. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I feel like this doesn't work as well. This analogy doesn't work as well because there's so many like automatic cars now. If you think about like, <laughs> right? driving a standard car, like gear one and gear two for Utica were just like they were they were crap. You know, they're, they're, they were burning out the clutch. The car smelled like crap in there. You know, they were going up a hill. It was hard to control it. But once they hit third gear, once they hit like you know two thirds of the way through the game, they were like, oh, okay, that that's how the clutch works. They figured out how to drive the standard <laughs> car, and they just started zooming, and they just zoomed yeah. their way to the end of the game, and honestly, it was 6-6 six, six at the half, and we're like, okay, no, this is an even game. Everything's working well, and Utica said, nah, you know what? Cast a curse. You're, we're going <laughs> to end the game right now, and that's exactly what they did. It was a fantastic showing, but of course, changing it up here, going from Ascent, a very balanced, a very small map, to Pearl, which is also somewhat balanced, but a larger map. There's a lot more map on Pearl. Mm -hmm. I think and that's you the can best see... way to describe it. Right? <laughs> yeah. I agree, I agree. And Utica are going to be staying on that defensive side to kick things off, which is interesting for, I want to say, multiple reasons. Because again, their defensive side looked a little bit weak, and it wasn't just the map, it felt like, right? It felt like, hey, they were revving their engines, they took a little bit of time, but they also weren't rotating as nicely as I would have liked, right? The reactions aren't great. Now, when they're in control, they are in control, and I think that was highlighted in their attack. We'll see if that same thing is going to occur here in game number two. What we are seeing is at least HT07 and Joyce remaining on their original. Actually, make that three as Valley is also there as well. So three original characters or agents coming over into this game number two. On the flip side, we're seeing a much larger changeup. Uh, I believe everyone now has a different agent on their side. So a completely different composition. Yeah, and I mean, the Jets are going to stay consistent in terms of being the sort of op agent on both sides. It's mm -hmm. a little bit strange how Valorant has sort of evolved, where before he used to have an entry fragger every single time. Now Jets are playing op a lot of the time, and they're not really mm -hmm. the entry fragger. You know, you're relying more on some of these flashes to come down, relying mm -hmm. more on other things. But, you know, it's a sky on one side, but look at how defensive-sided NYT's comp is. You know, they've got this Asher, they've got the Viper as well. They've got double smokes going for them right now, alongside a Cypher who has quasi-smokes of their own, and of course sight lockdown in their own right. But of course it's interesting to see them switch up the comp so much. I think we talked about it in map one where Killjoy is basically like the new chamber in a lot of ways where everyone is picking killjoy she's so strong right now but this time they're going to switch it up with a cypher and while there are some nice lineups that you can do on both of these sites to lock them down and you have different ways that you can move around the cypher will it provide you as much value on the offensive side as the killjoy and that's really the question because cypher always been known as a really good defensive sided agent but on attack kind of is a nothing burger doesn't really do a whole lot unless you wanna... plant yeah, I want to field something to you, Rare Adam, because this is going to be an interesting thing. Uh, we were just talking about how there was a massive compositional change. Well, there is also a player change as well, right? In game number one, Salty Gamer was in for the side of NYIT, and that was a sub, because on the original roster that at least I saw, Zero IK was the original starter for this squad, so this might also have something to do with it. Right, a shift of a player, a shift back to their original composition. Uh, maybe this is what NYIT were hoping to run a bit. Potentially could have been, you know, class. I mean, that, that's honestly yeah. the best answer I have most of the time. You know, could have just been class, but nonetheless, five stack towards A on both sides. B site is no one's there. There's nothing going on at B-Site. They just said, you know what? A, first letter of the alphabet, let's go there first. And that's exactly it. what's happening. But look at where the Killjoy sort of pinched up here on the Utica side. Just sort of looking for any lurkers, potentially anyone through art. ht 7 is just going to vibe here for now, but now they're going to execute on the site. Oh! Wow. <laughs> you tried. You tried. Uh, the, the jet dash and dash and cloak works sometimes if you drop that orb a little bit closer to you and you can actually get some cover this time around it did not work and instead you lead your team to a 2-4 setup nyit may not be starting this game off on the best of feet and visor now stuck against the turret as before chaser wondering what the heck is going on here just what what do i need to do <laughs> 
the problem? The killjoy turrets are actually OP. Like, Thirty seconds. <laughs> they just keep firing. They just keep going. They, it's like the, the little engine that cut the whole like children's book. You know, they yeah. just keep going and to trade there on site. But Light Yagami has forty nine health. And also doesn't have the spike in sight, so 15 <laughs> seconds left. You know, at this point, you actually just have to die. It's actually the best thing to do. You just have to run in there. You have to take the L, try and find the one. You tried, and, and we give we give lots of props for trying, but that does give Valley a 3-0 start. And remember, Valley in game number one was bottom of the frag board. I, I do want to point that out. The Jet did not have the best of times this time around. And to start things off with the 3k yields positive results, right? I'm very excited to see if they're able to make that work and if they can this time around show what they got and, uh, you know, play like a duelist feels like they should be playing all the time. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's it's like duelist ego in some ways, right? Like, yeah. I'm either going to be top of the frag board or bottom of the frag board. I'm not sitting in the middle. I'm not going to be your second frag. No, I am going 20 and over 0 and 20, you know? It's, it's the Yasuo effect. Or league inclined of yours or anything. I, I feel like you know. <laughs> I, I feel the exactly Yasuo meme is, though, right? everywhere. Yeah, I feel the Yasuo meme is everywhere though. It's a very universal thing now. <laughs> oh my goodness! Look at how many people are peeking through halls. There, five members pulled in by that star, I believe it is, and yet no one dies. They they didn't want a chance it. This time they do die. Oh! Joyce just mows down three in a single flip. Anchor's there to help out. A three of a kind beats one only. And, and you know what, <laughs> Utica, it, it was one they were supposed to win, granted, yes, but it, you're right, the star drew them all in, and then uh, Utica just waited. <laughs> they were like, all right, and look at this, full clip, full clip, doesn't even get uh, the first kill, and then turns it, and Mythic, Mythic is also a new player. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's two substitutions coming yeah, through. Yeah, okay, right so I, I I apologize to Mythic because I didn't see that one either. Who stepped out? Is it Ethan? I that think Ethan. Ethan stepped out, so it's Mythic. Yeah, so we lost Salty Gamer and Ethan, who Ethan played a phenomenal Killjoy, by the way, 17 and 5 on the other side. And Salty Gamer, who was a 10 16 on the jet, now with a brand new setup. And, and okay, Mythic saying, yeah, 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 you better say my name. <laughs> I have this bike. Uh, honestly, I mean, substitutions, especially in week one. I will give teams a little bit more leeway in that regard because, you know, mm -hmm. you're still trying to roster. You're still trying to figure out what sticks, what is best for you. And after what we can conclude was not a great second half coming through from NYIT, maybe just trying to switch up some voices, trying to switch something up to potentially even help the playing field a little bit more. Maybe that's their goal at the end of it. But Utica, you know, continuing where they left off, albeit with a little bit of an unfortunate casualty from Joyce to start off this round three. They're looking still strong on Anchor. Able to pick one up on Nazaro as well. I think they were already on site. Oh no, this is not a good situation. Oh my. On to site and on to a Nano Swarm, opening up the chance for these attackers to get closer. What is he on Mythic? Who is going to try and survive the Valley? Able to sneak it away before that star opens up. Beautiful job by Valley, who again, holding things up, but can't find the corner visor with these sneaky plays. Left. May not have the teleports, but has the angles and might find anchor now as well. No one was checking. You swing, you get the pinch. And welcome to the 2v1 chaser. You got a marshal. That's not exactly the gun you like to see in a 2v1. I mean, it is 35 health on both of these members. If you can land one shot, you can potentially clutch it out. But yeah, it's a total of a... Uh, nice number of HP there for them, but nonetheless, Chase is going to have to try and find something here, and of course, with the pit classic, it might actually be your best bet, you know, two shots to both of them from any range will sort of clean up that kill, it's just whether they can find it, the angles where it matters, and look at this from Visor, great angle being held, oh man. Oh, Visor took a peek and is now going to try and play for time, but it brings out enough for Light Yagami to say, I got you, sprays through the wall and knows it like the back of their hand. So, it was dicey, it was a little bit complicated, and they lost one more member than they probably would have liked. But NYIT do collect a round and do not go 3-0 at the start of this half. Yeah, ended that with, you know, under 50 HP on the team, but somehow you're able to clutch it out. And at the end of the day, the round win is still a round win. You're able to do some decent damage to the economy on the flip side, but nonetheless, Utica have their full bite. This is their buy round, and on the flip side, of course, it's a bulldog. There's some light shields. IDK board just isn't buying anything. It's just classic there. Actually going to pick up the Spectre at the end to sort of round things out, but it's not the cleanest of buys here from NYIT. It's not really a bonus round. It's more so a get what you can get buy at that, and... Chaser already spawning out multiple members, at least with the Hawk. That smoke is great, though, to stall him out, at least for a little bit. It's four members towards this A-side. Every single round has just been a full commit from the side of NYIT. Win or lose.
Oh, and this time IDK board is able to get inside of that jet smoke. Ooh. And you're able to spray back, so they are able to contest. This is something that they tried last time, but the spray anchor! You spray through, you knew where they were, and gets a hit, Reg. You're now stuck inside again, and you spray. Can you get it? Can you get a second? You're gonna try. Oh, you hear it. You wasted another clip. Oh my gosh, Joyce does not help out at all. Utica, though, with all five members alive, are gonna wait for the last two of NYIT to go up mid. One splits up, one splits uh -oh. back towards me. Oh, That's a trade. Oh, Vi what was that, Visor? What was that? A little bit of a love tap, and you drop that kill. That was nasty. Four, that was four. the game <laughs> at its finest. They're just able to find it, and now you have the Cosmic left. Divide here. This can be a very difficult site to retake because you can just put the Cosmic four, Divide that splits off the spike from everywhere else on the map, and that's you exactly what they're going it. to do. They're going to make this as challenging as possible, and now any angle they want to take on the site is going to be cut off by this wall and visor just has every single angle to play with even a little bit of a cheeky peek corner there hiding right in that corner of that hall and that's gonna be so difficult to spot out because the wall drops and all of a sudden there's an astro there all of a sudden peekaboo whether it's uh, one way or the other we'll see what happens but valley finds light yagami sleeping visor ain't sleeping at all and so might be able to get another swing nope anchor takes a 3k Plenty of time left to defuse, and welcome to the 3-1. Utica win the first gun duel of NYIT. Able to finally match it there, and while the Astro Wall was very strong, it was actually the Molly that dropped down the Vulnerable that really put uh, Astro in a really difficult spot there, unfortunately. In and now, how it works for them, you know, it's going to be one... Vandal picked up maybe from the side of NYIT, maybe a full save. There might be a second one coming through from Might, but of course, Utica is just able to pick up where they left off in map number one. They're continuing this trend. You know, it's now 12 out of the last 13 rounds that they've picked up in a row, even with the substitutions coming through from NYIT, not quite sticking yet. But of course, there's still a lot of game to be played here. I just find it interesting that they chose to take the time out this round when they're mm -hmm. more so going to be on a save as opposed to next round when they would have a full buy where they can maybe find some executes. If anything, maybe this timeout is just more so a mental thing to say, hey, listen, we still got this. We still got lots of Valorant to play. Let's just calm it down. Let's try and pick ourselves back up. It is different than the one that they did earlier, right? Game one, I think it came in around, uh, I want to say around 10. Uh, when they were Round pretty eight, neck and neck towards the end of it. Yeah. It was uh, like four so. three. That was the score. Okay, yeah. Closer yeah, to was that. Close. Closer to the eight. Closer to the eight. You are correct. Um But the call out, I, I do like it, and there is always kind of the debate between whether you should do it on a buy round or you should just do it, you know, on a pistol, whatever you say, but I do agree. I think it was mental. It feels like they got shaken up by that last one because they probably sat there and said, We have that opportunity, right? We felt like we had that one in our hands. And you can't let that one get away, right? You can't sit there and, like, let that get to you uh, in, in the mental state. So I agree with you, Adam, saying, hey, okay, let's get that let's get that very nice mental back. And we'll take our chances once again. No one departing spawn this time, though. NYIT taking things extremely slow. And I think maybe it's just a little bit of a strategy switch up as well. You know, they don't have the gun advantage. They want to sort of find off angles, play a little bit ratty if that's the correct term for it. You know, just try to hold angles. We'll put it that way. We'll say it nicer, but, you know, even still, IDK4, just with this frenzy, this is tough. You know, already spotted out. Has to find one. And still, it's really close. Yeah, Chase is going to find that one. Now, like Yagami, same thing. I feel, uh, I feel rats more for the other games, but we call that lurking, right? We, we hear the lurkers in some of these rounds. It's like, ah, we'll, we'll chill out. We'll, we'll sneak around, be real nosy. I feel like that's what we're going for. But either way, we are seeing Visor once again still get kills no matter what. One at least one or two, and fragging up feels great. It is still a 4v3, though. A little bit left. of HP lost there on the Astra, and Anchor's ready to take someone's life. Out goes the Trailblazer. Where are you going to find you? Find oh, a oh, my God. Ah! You do not see that too often, by the way. Clip it and ship it. Chaser gets a Trailblazer Ooh. kill, and if there is a time to lose the mental, it was that. Yeah, honestly, you know, 30 damage. That's what it does if it lands the bite. <laughs> Half the time it doesn't land the bite, you know, it just sort of goes in there and you get the stunned or whatever, but you know, there was one angle I felt like for Visor to stay at and it's just unfortunate, you, you know, you get bit foot. by the dog. <laughs> <sighs> you saw a Man. foot, it was sticking out a single foot and you said it. That's so good. I'm I <laughs>
Happens, I just happens have... to the best of players, honestly. That's what happens. I know. <laughs> In the time that I've cast Valorant, I've never seen a kill coming from, from a Trailblazer. That's like how rare it is to me, at least. It's like a satchel kill. Those never happen. Either. Yeah, Those that's like, so true. It's like 15 damage unless you charge it up. Oh, my goodness. HTO7 does all of the damage to Mythic there. But yeah, <laughs> so, some of these ability kills are just really fun. It's like a turret kill almost as well. Though that one yeah. makes a little bit more sense. It's firing a whole bunch of bullets. That yeah. It's a turret. It, we're it's hoping it gets some kills, yeah. right? Like, that's the plan. Right now, getting into this round, though, it is a four. Uh, it's 4-1 into round six as Utica are storming their way through. And... They're, they're playing a lot more reactive, and I like this, right? One of the things that I did say, one of the critiques I had is it felt like they weren't reacting appropriately. It felt like they weren't rotating quickly when they heard some of the shots or when they were deciding if they wanted to sit on the side or not. Here on Pearl, they feel a lot more decisive. They feel a little bit more comfortable. And again, it might have just been those first round jitters. Coming in here, NYIT got to shake off the rest as well. They are semifinalists as well. This is not a team outside of their reach. Let's we'll see what they can do. English the blind. It only has one, and around the corner, you realize exactly there's more than just one. And it opens up that A site corridor. Anchor is going to take out Zoro. And Joyce left. is going to hide in the back. Visor gets a plant. It's a 4v3 retail. Here comes the Fatal, though. The Viper ult as well traded out. Marks two members, I believe, but. It's gonna be a tough retake here through the Viper ult. Of course, the changes have come through in the preseason. You have to stay inside your Viper ult a lot more, but IDK4 is gonna pick one up. Quick little snap. Like you got me, ready to go. Season out like him. Find a choice, knocks down that ulti. And this now brings her right back into Utica's favor. HDO7 on a rampage. Five is still alive. Looking for another, gets one DK. My gosh, that was one more than I thought. Do you get the defusal? But it was a rough round. Utica lose four members. They're not stack up the econ this time day. around. I mean, they've still got so much in the inventory that yes. I don't think it's going to be too big of a hit. Joyce, of course, going to be able to carry over their own gun. And yeah, I, I'd have to say they're, they're still looking pretty good. That's an operator now picked up by a valley for themselves. Of course, it will be a somewhat significant buy. I've got a feel from the side of NYT. Maybe they're going to force up this round, and that's what it seems to be just because they're close to having enough credits to go for it. Instead, though, they're actually going to back off up for a hero vandal at least on mythic and it's it's interesting strategies going both ways it's always very curious to see how these teams Get are trying to go for their buys and yeah it ends up being you know a whole bunch of switch ups they're deciding and it's three vandals now coming through uh with saves on the other two members it's it's a mixed bag but of course those three vandals can be all the difference all you need you know is one vandal realistically and five kills with it so you know. <sighs> Depends on how you make it sound it. so easy, but Visor might make it easier. Okay, yeah. Adam, I hear you. I hear you <laughs> starting who I believe maybe uh, HTO7 said, yeah, you better start believing in that single vandal that's alive. HTO7 drops the lockdown and says, now you got to work through my stuff. The entirety of B site is locked down. They're still going to drop the plan. Oh my planted. gosh. It has to run. Yeah, that is ballsy. That is extremely ballsy, and you get out to safety. Only one is detained underneath that Just side. Visor. The Mythic is going to save it. Anchor is taken out, and you're getting oh. zapped. No! HGO7 lays the perfect one, but Mythic is able to turn it around. It's now 1v2. What in the world? This this section of events has changed everything. Like, Yagami is going to get taken down. Chaser is one hit away. Both players. Going what the heck just happened? 32 HP on Mythic. One team more by Chaser, and Chaser is going for it. That's half, and now you back off. The timer ticks. Oh, the cheat out. Mythic did it. You back him off. It's halfway. Do you get the kill? No, you do not. Chaser is going to go for it. I think there's enough time. There's plenty. It is oh. done. Oh, no. It was point three off. Oh, my gosh. Chaser goes down, and NYIT win a second. Wow, that was close. <laughs> that was really close at that. I mean, it was Chaser three, able to man, find the clutch, but it's point three seconds, you know. That's all you need at the end of it. And the slimmest of the margins is how NYT yeah. won only their second round. It, it feels bad because it was still a rather large investment from them. Yes, they're still going to be able to buy up, but on the flip side, Valley has the knives. That's going to be the only person who hasn't bought a gun for themselves. Anchor going to be going for a nice little uh, lurk strats in the smoke. We'll put it that way. And... Mm -hmm. 
you know, Visor has been so good at these long range fights and everything, but even still, right there, just gets caught out there with the, the lockdown, you know, might have overestimated themselves a little bit that they could get out of it, but that slow is so detrimental, and Killjoy just picking up three that round as well, just basically all of them. Well, uh, oh. Anchor, Anchor what? said hello! The only reason Anchor did not get another is they ran out of bullets. I repeat, the judge ran out of bullets. Uh, that is that is painful. Mythic trying to salvage what they can gets the orb and is able to take out some of the secrets with the teammate. But that was Utica just saying thanks for the memories. Beautiful shot. Knives are out as well. So Utica playing up to their ultis here and saying we want to put six on the board. We want to ensure we hit that halfway point. And with 40 seconds left, I'm not sure NYIT are too sure about where they want to go. They look a little bit lost at that. I mean, mm -hmm. H207 is now moving up mid here. Look how much space they've taken on this map. It, it just feels as if NYT haven't really explored left. the map that much. They've yep. looked through art, they've looked through main, and that's the space that they've gained for themselves. But even then, even with the judge going down, Pfizer picking that kill up, and now they're able to open it up. But it, that's all they gained over a minute and a half. And now, 15 seconds left, they haven't cleared sight. They're just going to have to win these gunfights. I mean, they're doing it, right? If there's one thing, it's Mythic and Visor doing pretty well with those gun duels, and you get the snap. The HD07 said it doesn't matter how much you fight, if you're only one HP, there's going to be some problems. IDK board, though, finds Valley, and that leaves it a 1v2. With that Nightfall going out, you are marked, you are decaying, you are in trouble. You better look left and right very, very quickly. You take a peek and you can't find it. IDK board swings it in favor of NYIT. They might be lost, but they found their way to the goal. And honestly, that was a very strong end of round. We talked about how they didn't explore the map much, and it really was one option. They had to go to A. But unfortunately, Utica just start losing the gunfights there, and that's the biggest difference. You can do all you can to be diligent and try and find the angles necessary and try and you know, force your opponents into a certain situation. But if they just win the gunfights, if they kill you, you can't do anything about it. You know, you just, you're, you're stuck watching the rest of your teammates for the rest of that round. And two picks getting in onto site, getting the numbers advantage, the trades afterwards, the crossfire is all very good. But Valley, oh my goodness, this is crazy. That is so much invested on both ends. The aggressive push up B, the challenge by Utica, or the challenge by NYIT to take that. And both teams come out neck and neck. What it does leave is a very open A site, and that's what NYIT are currently chasing. Anchor, Anchor, Anchor wants it. Takes three shots. Oh, three misses. That hurts. Can you find the fourth? You're going to drop a few more orbs. You're going to look. You're going to look to the angle. You get three off, and you lose out because you don't have any ammo. Oh, Anchor. That one hurts to watch back. Go. 0.3 degree spray that happens on your first shot. <laughs> it, I, I feel like that's what it was because that crosshair looked like it was dead on the head and yet three misses in a row. You hate to see that happen. In the end, you know, six bulls, one lands. Now IDK board is just in the corner. Oh. Also though, able to turn it around. It's now 2v2, you know, numbers are even, but this health is not gonna be quite in the best of situations. And the poison goes down as well. The stall that tactics are dead. real too. And Zoro lights him up, doesn't have a sword, but has a bulldog. Round goes to NYIT as they are close to tying things up. And Adam, Adam we're getting back to almost deja vu of game number one. Mm. Yeah, the timeout actually ended up coming through at a rather decent time. Yes, it was at 3-1, and they dropped the next two rounds afterwards. But once they were able to get their buys back about them, they've been able to pick up three rounds in a row for themselves. Sort of take the wind out of Utica's sails a little bit. I'm curious to see how that'll have work out for NYIT. I mean, of course, last night it was Utica taking a timeout there. 4-3 uh, in favor of N NYIT at that point in time. And now... From there, they were able to sort of push forward at that. Maybe this is the same situation for NYT. Visor's just getting everyone here. It's traded out finally, but 30 health on h 7 is not the best of situations. He took out two and a half people. That's more than enough than you could ask for for a charge up B side. You're very happy about that. And now you get another pinch on the other side. You're gonna see, you're gonna pre fire that and you get it. You know what? You'll take it and you leave Zora open for that hit. Anchor is able to get a retaliation kill, and it's now down to a 2v2. Board, sitting in waiting, and Joyce finds the body shots. 1v2 here as Light Yagami. Better put that knife away soon. Thank you very much. Vandal is out, and they're about to meet around these doors.
Neither side knows each other. There. Who sees it? And Joyce saw the shoulder first. Kill. And round goes to Utica. Yeah, Late had this knife out, then had the gun out, but really just needed that book out, needed the death note to turn that one around, unfortunately. <laughs> but wasn't able to get the ink onto the paper. Utica, at the very least, have secured themselves half of the half. It's just a matter of whether they can continue that momentum forward, if they've got their wits back about them. And looking at the buy coming through from NYT, a lot of their victories were scrappy. They were one member surviving, two members surviving. There was the one where everyone got wiped out, and it was just a spike left to do its duty. Very curious to see if NYT are going to be able to sort of hold the line here, but even still, it's relative full buys on both sides. It just comes down to execution once again. The executions have been ups and downs for both sides, and Joyce has someone, someone go into the old star, and you're gonna swing Joyce! Joyce is dirty with it! Dinsey finds her inside of that star form, but it doesn't matter. On the other side of the map, Utica will wipe out two more members, and Visor, your visor is telling you that you got nothing. You're gonna throw up the cosmic divide, because why the heck not? You're gonna try and dance your way to mid, you're gonna dance your way in and out of this wall, and you pray, you pray, they are not on that B or A site. And you know it is a fruitless one to pray for because they got four alive and they are ready. A painful way to watch as the seventh round goes the way of Utica. Last round before the switch. Fantastic from choice. Just oh picture perfect. You know, they lined up. It was like they were posing for a picture. And Joyce just able to spray them all down, of course, misses out on Visor, who is in astral form, just barely behind that wall as well, just barely out of the reach. But yet, a very quick round, a very clean round to the side of Utica. The buys on the opposite side aren't pretty. Spectres, Bulldogs, one Hero Vandal on Mythic once again. Of course, we'll have to see how they play this one out. It's three ultimates available for Utica as well. Surely they're able to get to the eight here because they've got more than enough investment in the tank. Oh! And Chaser just has it off and the Vandal. I love this, yeah! <laughs> the Dance of Guns is so good, by the way. Whenever you have enough money to do this, it's ridiculous, right? Chase is like, I got money to spare. I don't give a crap. You can try all you want. I have both. And it's going to dance it up to the high ground. I love this so much. This is amazing. The juggle brings it to the high tops. And they're going to have no idea. They're going to wait and see. You see the cool come up. And you see a stunner step. And you get the other. They're like, hey, where did that op go? And now they're going to swap. They're going to be ready. Defender lockdown coming in. This is the last push. This is the last effort inside of that poison. They're going to try their best. NYIT finding one. Visor finds Joyce. And looking for a bit more for the three chaser walking forward no one is locked down and because of that the poison goes down like yagami is on five hp and up goes the astro wall on the other side the cosmic divide denies but the poison is down do you chase through that's a big question and you meet each other you lose one for one it's still three for two and you get behind anchor swings behind mythic visor is able to find the diffuser and it's a dance of death. Pfizer needs to get a final shot out. And you get the spray. You get four. Does Pfizer do it? Pfizer. Pfizer. Do you get it? No, you don't. But I think you've made enough time. It's going to come down to the moment. And you still have a minute or a second and a half left. That was chaotic <laughs> to say the least. Switching sides. What just happened on that side? Just everything got thrown. I mean, as you, it comes down to the ultimate difference, actually, because, yeah. you know, Light was left with 5 HP. Great plays Can from Chaser to juggle the guns around and find two, and that ends up being the difference because it was just crazy, hectic, chaotic at the end of that round. And realistically, either side could have come out with it. In the end, though, Utica just barely has enough, just has an extra little bit of util, an extra member on site that ends up making the difference. And now, on their attacker half, which was flawless on Ascent, we'll see if they're able to recreate the magic or if NYT have a couple of trips, tricks up their sleeve. I just want to see Visor pop off some more. <laughs> Visor has done this now twice, by the way. Um, and, and he's currently tied for their game one. Uh, kills uh, 17. 17 and 16 was the score last time. And in this game two, on an Astra, no less, is looking like a beast. So both times are having a lot of fun. I'm excited to see what more they can do. And oh, maybe we get to uh, ramble along. As a peaceful round. Is he gonna eat away Valley what? though? With the sprint, finds Visor and he gets healed up to boot. So rude. Oh no, Mythic is 
in dire straits the smoke fades. Satisfying. Oh, never mind. They're good. <laughs> they find the head, and now it's down to a 4v4 once again. Look at how much space they've taken up mid, though. Mid -mid. Sort of sprinting around, revealing their position. It's a couple of kills picked up by Utica. And now, look at where the other two members are of NYIT are. A site, you know, ding dong, no one's home. They're just going to get a free site to themselves, and now 2v4 retake not going to be the best of situation. Spike planted. Last player standing. Oh, man. Joyce also swinging hard. And it's down to one Zoro, the main roster player, <laughs> going, what do I do here? Who do I see? I see pain. HTO7 rounds the corner and says thank you very much. We are now at nine rounds, Utica. I mean, it's happening again. It's, it's ridiculous. They're, 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 so, they're doing it again. <laughs> they're so streaky. This is what happens. Utica yeah. will just, they will either win four rounds in a row or lose four rounds in a row. And it feels... Like, from my memory, at least, this feels distinctly familiar. Where Utica just, they'll rattle off five, six, seven rounds in a row, or they'll lose five, six, seven rounds in a row. And it's a similar case here. They start off this map so hot. They win five of the first six rounds. It was as if, you know, map one never left. And then they just go cold. They lose three rounds in a row. They just look completely lost. And then they're able to pick it back up once again, finding another four in a row. Now, with the econ advantage, this surely should be a free round for them far. Anything crazy valley's already on the site here and taking so much space for himself oh well a single class kill got one but anchor is ready to go oh. and fires away uh we kind of expected that anchor has had some fun um oh man that was good idk board though does find anchor with 20 hp gets the kill is now gonna pick up their specter and it's down to a 3v3, so you know what? Better than expected is the best way to put it here. Unfortunately, Zoro has not had the luxury of finding a weapon of their own. So they're going to take a chance. The retake defense is tucked uh, up really nicely, though. They're going to swing out here in a sec. Joyce gets a spray down. And IDK board goes, maybe I was a little bit too bored. The Shield 7 is going to drop the turret. That's the wrong way, though. And Joyce is ready. Joyce gets one. And Shield 7 finishes it off. And it is now 10 to 4. Utica, three away from taking the series. And honestly, a very strong round. I mean, Anchor, living up to their name once again, anchoring down the flank, able to find two at the very least. And while it was some decent damage to the Econ, getting three of those guns out of the hands, still not going to be the cleanest of buys on the flip side. I mean, there was a Stinger Force coming through from a couple of those members. You know, even with that nerf coming down, they still opted to go for it. So Visor... Has the Phantom, no shields. And I'm not sure if they have all the stars either in that situation. I see two placed down, possibly a third. That's what's going to be really difficult because if you don't have all those stars, yep, you've already, you have two stars. And that's all you'll have for this round. So you're going to have less map control. And that could mm -hmm. end up being pivotal because of a Stinger Force that just went sour. It's a lot more of a gamble here, and because of that gamble, you pay the price, right? You, you lost the pot, you don't get to play with it anymore. Or... You bet on black, it was red. You know, that's yeah, 50 -50. <laughs> There it is, there it is. You got... <laughs> I love it. You got all the analogies, and I love it so much, right? You got the old manual car, you got, you got the gambling references, like, we got everything here. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right, so getting into this round, we are finally seeing more action come through, and you know what? It's Mythic with the First Blood, who honestly has been putting up some of those First Bloods and, and very nicely taking away an opponent off of Utica. So for NYIT, you will be very happy about that kill. The question is, can you get more? Mythic's like, yeah, we can get a little bit more. Gets another headshot onto HT07. And Utica are actually the ones wondering, where do they want to 30 seconds go? left. Where do they want to push in? And you got 30 seconds. How much longer? Are you going to wait? Are you going to just charge in this fight? Be the best option. Ooh, you'll find out. You know someone's there. But Mythic is just too on point. 3k and a half. 7 HP. But you did the work. Visor was ready. Anchor gets a point blank on Visor. And IDK board finishes it off. Two drops. That's to be expected. NYIT happy. They got their round. Yeah, and they're able to pick up some of those guns as well. You know, it's going to be holding... Uh, at least for IDK board, their full money, shield. And just being able to save buyout for their friends as well on the team. And now it's a full buy coming through from Utica. They're going to be the ones with a little bit of extra available. But even still, it's not the worst of situations for the side of NYIT. We've seen them 
able to perform at, at this level. You know, it's the first time that they've actually won around on defense in two maps. But at the very least, it is a round for themselves. And now they're going to try and just rush out, be just file through and see what they can find. And honestly, it seems to be red here from Utica. There are four members towards this side of the map. So it seems as if they've got the reads and we'll see if they can execute on it. Yeah, four over here and they got a lurker in the back position and a dash over the top to clear out that back alley oh, but needless to say like it got me read it like a book uh, like they wrote the book almost all the lasers going up and over just trying to figure out where they want to move and Utica, yeah. after losing their jet say we can see you fought that well yeah, they just I, they got valley to go way back into the halls light yagami was there Oh, okay. See you, Valley. You're <laughs> and uh, they just rotate right away. And now there's so much of the map that is still left unexplored, but also so much of the map that all of a sudden NYT have to cover. You know, mm -hmm. these quick rotations can really be lethal because you have all of your members towards the B site. You've got this set up and then they move. And you're like, oh, well, where are they going now? We don't really have sound cues to go off of. And now they might just go right back to B and you know, catch the mapping a little bit because this Astro's already gone. Oh. Granted, that's why I get so much. Thirty seconds left. Wow, IDK board I thought got away from that one very nicely and because of that I thought they were gonna get some kills, but no, Chaser is instead able to swing one. It's down to a 4v4, so Yudika able to even up. Now trying to get on the side. Zoro's oh. down! Zoro got tagged, like Yagami finds it back. 3v3 is going to work to difficult it. moments. 10 seconds, seconds left. left, they have to get on side, they have to get this plan. They're gonna work on a Chaser, gonna get the plan down. Bodyguards are on the hunt. For the other kills, and they get it just in time. And my IT not with the retake. Oh, oh, Anchor. Anchor saw it, took some shots, and didn't get some damage, and is now back with the team. Damn, this wall is so difficult to deal with because it's, it's an off angle. It's an off angle wall of all things that's going to make it so difficult to find with the fatal coming down. Anchor finds one. Remaining. Last player they find a bit more. Like, Yagami wants the ace. Oh, are we going to get our first ace? Are we going to get it? Oh, the Seekers gave it away. The Seekers gave it away. Are you gonna get blind? You, you, you oh, Chaser! Chaser negates it! How, how, how could you do that, Chaser? How dare you? And, and it's such a difficult situation there because yeah. of Hall, there's, it's a 50-50 every mm. single time. While the Seeker goes out one way, you could just pop out the other way at the end of it. Chaser just stays on the same side, just follows the Seeker out, follows the Hawk out, throws everything all the same way, overloads on that long side of the U. It just prevents the ace at that and Light. It did what you could. It was a magical round at that for Light, but fortunately the magic faded a little bit too early. It is not going to be the round win for it themselves. And now Utica at 11. Granted, their buy is not the cleanest overall. They're it's basically both teams on a save round almost. <laughs> so funny to hear. That's, that's so funny to hear. Yeah, we're on a save. What happened? We won the round. What? <laughs> what yeah, the heck? I mean, Chaser has a phantom. And we saw Valley with the ghost, and then there's pistols on the other side. It's there's there's nothing, there's no firepower. This is a nothing burger round almost. But it, it, sometimes these are the most fun rounds because they're just crazy. Oh my goodness! I, I feel the teams have been crazy enough that's given us enough heart attacks, right? Like we're just like we have had enough action. We had crazy moments like that one. A random shot to the wall means they clear house out, and they go ding dong. Whoa. We are here. Mythic able to get a shot. You get another. You're allowed to reload at least. But now you're down to just a few seconds left. Everyone decides to swing at the same time. You're able to grab one more behind. But it might not be enough. Zoro, though. Zoro with the Ares. Of all guns. A, a barrel stuff. All right. No. No one's going around the corner. I was going to be like, if you pick up two here, that's going to be hilarious. But no. They wisely go for that plant. They're going for the more understandably strong play. Drawing. Not last player. I, not gonna lie, I thought Anchor was gonna go for the knife. I honestly thought that was gonna come out. But no, it is gonna be match point for Utica. The semi-finalist possibly taking down the other semi-finalist in a 2-0. And I mean, as we mentioned off the top, this ECC conference is up for grabs. Malloy not participating in it this time around. So, mm. you know, these are two teams that are potentially favorites to go a long way this series, this mm -hmm. season at least. Utica just showing up with a fantastic performance to open up their season thus far. Even with a miracle coming back from NYIT, Utica have shown that they have the confidence, they have the drive to push forward. I think at this point, it's even if they don't win. Oh, of course, I, I, this is all theoretical. If they, win, <laughs> they still get, they get side select for map three. 
with how many rounds they won and how many mm. rounds NYG didn't win. Kind of but nonetheless, they're just playing it slow. They want to take their time. Everyone's on a full buy. Zoro has the fun gun. You should run. Face your fear. Oh, the second fun gun into the <laughs> nightfall and the lockdown just. Zero's like, bruh, like, can't I get a single moment of peace? Light Yagami is able to find Anchor, one of the mainstays here for this uh, Unica squad. Valley able to fire back, and again, Valley trying to show up here, have a fantastic time, but Zero can't get the gun out fast enough, and Valley takes advantage. Valley now with the knives out, is gonna try and swing, right clicks, and only lands one, is now gonna chase after, and finds a third. It is the Valley show to open and close here, 3k to start, and 3k or more to end Utica in a 4-2 is. is massive. One enemy remaining. Oh, Valley. Oh, 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 Valley. Oh, Chaser. Chaser oh, stole it. So mean. So mean, but it is the 2-0. Utica Esports finishing off with a 2-0. And it was over as quickly as it started. It felt like, you know, the first half of first map was very close. First half of both maps was very close, but Utica it seems as if they wake up in the second half. You know, quite literally the football meme. They had us in the first half, not going to lie, and yet they come <laughs> back in the second half every single time and they're able to secure it up. And honestly, congratulations to Utica for opening up their season with a very convincing victory over another very strong team. And I'm very curious to see how they're going to progress throughout this season because, as we mentioned off the top last season, they came into playoffs as the seventh seed and they made semifinals. It was an accomplishment in and of itself to get that far. And now starting off your season with a bang there, they're looking poised to sort of push forward, push for those finals and potentially take home this semester's ECC championship. But of course, a lot is left to be decided. There's a lot of Valorant in this season left to be played. And of course, a lot of time for strategies to still develop. Oh yeah, and the fact, and I love that last point that you were able to put in there because NYIT are the epitome of that, right? They were swapping out players from game one to two. They're still testing their limits. They're still finding out what works for them this uh, semester as well. So we cannot discount NYIT. I expect them to bounce back. I expect them to give us a great show down the road. And I expect to see them once again chasing that cup just like Utica will, all the same. But you know what? It is time and you know what this means as we are at the end of the series, but not the end of the broadcast we are going to try and grab a member of utica to interview after their 2-0 victory and see what their thoughts are at the start of their season what they're looking forward to and what their goals are for the team don't go anywhere all right see you later let's go harass boise state more who is this what school is this boise this is boise Oh man, that's okay. Boise's still got really good odds. A large bagel, one of their tank players, Nerdy Bird, their off tank, both of them not here. A little bit scary, for being honest. Getting warmed up, getting ready to cast some players. No, okay, not cast, interview. Change of mindset, change of mindset. Words. Oh, you you know, but last words until we until we come back. Oh, okay. Because we're leaving. Enjoy. Oh, that was good, that was good. Anything from you? How are you doing, Polly? Awesome, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Collegiate Esport Commissioner's Cup. I am Septilins, and I get a really neat opportunity here. We get to interview Burns from E United. Burns, how you doing? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing great. We're on day two of the event. It's been a fantastic one. I ran into you yesterday, but yeah. we were running around like chickens with our heads off, and it has been, I mean, how, how has your time been here? What has this event kind of been like? Yeah, it's great. I just love being in the passion pit, seeing all the college kids go at it. Uh, reminds me of like an old school MLG event almost, but being like in the epicenter of the passion yes. pit, seeing Rocket League, Valorant, Overwatch, and Smash, just, it's amazing to see all of these schools compete against each other and get a shot to play on this main stage. Yeah, no doubt about it. And tell us a little bit about kind of what is what is E-United, right? Because we know that yeah, sure. you're here, we know you're here to represent them, but for the people that don't know, what, what is E-United? Yeah, E-United was founded in 2016. We're a professional esports organization. Uh, we've been in League of Legends, Overwatch, all the way to uh, Battle Ride, I think it was called back in the day. Uh, <laughs> Right now in uh, 2022, we are in Gears of War, Halo, Rocket League, PUBG, wow. and announcing a new title tomorrow. Uh, I know, get get the small intel here. So 
It's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I went pro in Call of Duty when I was younger. I ended up playing my last event under E United, switched in 2016, and I've been uh, wow. the GM ever since. So it's, uh, it's a true blessing to be able to stay with an organization for as long as I have, and uh, we love giving back to the collegiate community. Uh, I actually graduated from Full Sail in 2013. I was a little confused yeah. about the jersey. I was yeah. A little <laughs> yeah, so the Full Sail boys are out of the tournament, unfortunately, but I decided I would rep them today I in their it. honor. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just great. I, I love working with younger individuals who are trying to find their path in esports, and yeah. these college kids are really showing what they're all about. Yeah, so to be kind of an ex pro player, where a collegiate scene at the time didn't exist, especially not to the scale yeah. right now, what is it like to see? such high levels of success, such high levels of support for something that you weren't able to kind of get as much support in at the time, something that was looked down on a lot more. Yeah, I'm uh, extremely jealous, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Full Sail started their program in 2017. When I was there in 2011 and 12, it was just a bunch of nerds running around, just right. creating their own clubs. I was still striving to go pro, but now you have these opportunities to play right. on main stage, play in front of thousands of people. We just had locals back in the day. You would show up and play for like $200, $100. It was like lunch money. Right. Now these kids are playing for scholarships. They're playing for fame. They could pop off here and end up getting a sponsor for ten dollars or $20,000 from somebody. Right. So the opportunities are just endless at the moment, and I think it's just great that, uh, you know, you basically can prove yourself and make anything happen right now. It's instead of kind of of what you had gone through being in college and also trying to go pro yeah. these kids can try to go pro while being 100%. in college it's hand in hand instead yeah. of those two kind of battling kind of matchups so if somebody's trying to go pro right they're like burns i want to be you one day i want to be the gm of united one day what is that first step to really take it from a hobby to to a passion to a job yeah i think i've told this story a lot but it's really, I thought about going pro every night before I went to bed. Right. Like, I lived and breathed Call of Duty for years. It was my life. I skipped, I had to skip dinner sometimes. I had to skip family functions. And my family didn't really understand, but it was what I wanted to do. And it all worked out. But uh, at the end of the day, you always need to kind of be organized. You have to have the ability to not put all of your eggs in one basket. So even though it worked out for me, there are so many opportunities right. in esports. There's being a caster or interviewing <laughs> yeah. people. There's be working in production. There's helping people get waters. Like literally, there are so many opportunities. So, um, oh, this crowd's awesome. They're going right crazy, <laughs> dude. <laughs> that, they stayed on their last life right off, now. Off subject, Smash, regardless if it's middle school, high school, college, oh, it pops off it all pops. the time. I love it. Well, Burns, so, thank you so no, much, yeah, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no it. worries. Thank you, guys. What is going on, everybody? And welcome to the ECAC Top Plays of the Week. I am Seth Dillens, and I'm super excited to walk through these with you so you can see all of the great moments we are getting out of collegiate esports. One of my favorite things about these seasons is as they go on, as the years continue to pass, the skill ceiling just gets higher and higher, and the teams get better and better. Starting things off in week one and two, these teams came out the gate swinging. Let's take a look at what they were ready to bring out in these early weeks. 
Valorant is a game all about risk versus reward, and Sin from NYIT wanted to show us just how much he was willing to risk to get that great reward of a round win. Force to pop off, maybe get a little bit more sniper play, but these direct tight angles make it tough. You have Axorus that actually gets a wall bang headshot onto Prime. Yeah, oh, that timing on the paranoia works so well. Yo, give it, give it up for the util, bro. Sin's gonna pick up three into the site. It's a lurk on its way from the chamber, but unless you're gonna spam through this box, you're not getting anything done. And Pandemonium let him get that far. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is a game that can be decided in milliseconds, and Waka, one of the best players from SUNY Canton A Squad, wanted to show us just what they can do with only a second and a single stock on the board. Cena. Sledge option gonna be charging for Smash going a little early. They're not quite getting what you want. Drop shield after first hit and pick, getting hit by the kick. I percent there is the stun into claw. That claw. Welcome back everyone. We're ready to go with this amazing interview because the series looked awesome. Start of the series or start of the games may have been a bit rough. It was like they were chugging along, they only had, you know, the uh the engine warmed up and then they sent it. Almost no problems through the second half every time on the attacking side. It feels like this team can become unstoppable. And to give us a bit more insight into the goings-ons of Utica, we have Joyce, the fading games one and two that helped lead the amazing victory. Joyce, how you doing after that? You know, it's feeling good. You know, we came out strong. I think we kind of started off a little bit slow in the first half, the 6-6 six, six half. But I think, like, once we got to halftime, we really, like, like focused up and, you know, we got the game in the second half and then that carried on into the second match yeah and sort of to follow up on that point actually we saw you take a timeout round eight of map number one there you were down four to three i believe and after that it just felt as if you were rejuvenated as a team of course no no leaks on what was said in there but sort of what was the mentality of that timeout and how you pushed forward afterwards um, to be honest that wasn't really a tactical timeout at all it was more of a just like let's focus up and like like let's just do it you know like it wasn't anything like tactical wise like we're just like let's look at what's happening and let's focus up yeah, and to follow up on that in map number two, you know, a really strong first half, a really strong map overall, and Pearl was, of course, your map pick. Is that something that you've been practicing a lot? Is that something in your wheelhouse, or was it just sort of, hey, this is the better of evils or sort of deal? Was it just sort of like, oh, we don't want to ban it, but we don't want to pick it either? Um, So, honestly, Pearl is one of our stronger maps. Um, we work on it, like, a good amount. Um, we worked on it in our boot camp uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, so I feel like we're really strong on Pearl, so, like, going forward, like, that's going to be a map that we want to play. All right, well, there you go. I mean, some awesome little strats coming out here. We saw it. It looked like so much fun. You guys have really had the angles down. And your players all seem very on point right now. I see you guys are running a pretty, you know, small roster with a single substitute on there. Is this most of the returning roster from last season as well? Uh, and if so, I mean, it sounds like you guys boot camped. How hard are you guys ready to go to get back even further than the semifinals? Um, so, yeah, we, we did boot camp, and this is, the, um, this is the same exact roster that we had last season. So, I mean, like, last season was our first time playing together. So, like, I mean, we, we practiced a lot. Like, we, we really, we grind. And, like, I mean, we want to win this season. Like, that's why we're here. That's why we're playing in it. We, we want to be the champs. Of course. And uh, with the win tonight, you guys kick things off very nicely. Is there any parting words, any shout-outs that you want to give, any respectful comments to anyone in the, uh, in the viewership or uh, anyone inside of the organization that you would like to give a hearty, hearty respectful uh, shout-out to? Yes, definitely. First of all, I got to shout out Dan Sportello. He's our director. I mean, like, we wouldn't have any of this without him. Like, he really makes this thing go. Like, he's always there for us whenever we need. Um, obviously, my teammates, you know, like, we're all, we're all on the same page as far as grinding. We all want to win. We all want to be here. And I obviously, shout out the viewers. My mom and dad are in there. I don't know if you guys yeah. see Joy's dad in the chat at all, but he's out there. My uncle's in there. You know, I got friends in there. Khaled Balwan is my man. Just want to shout out everybody else. Coach, the crit, he's a man, Chris. Like, these guys, I've been playing with him for 10, 15 years, you know. So, I mean, like, we, we go way back. So, I mean, it, it all brought us together at Utica. So, we're building something special. I love to hear it. It's been an amazing time. And thank you so much for the amazing series in your 2-0 sweep here tonight. Thank you so much for the interview, Joyce. Thank you. 
With that, of course, we will be done with this broadcast. We've had an amazing time here. I know I have, and hopefully Rare Adam has as well, because Rare Adam is freaking awesome and gave so much awesome insight into what could be a marquee matchup in the future. So make sure to keep eyes on both these squads later on into the season. But that'll be it for us here on the broadcast. Tomorrow, there's going to be even more action as we have League of Legends kicking off at 8 p.m. EST. So make sure to tune in here to Esports U once again if you want to catch that over there. With that, that'll be it for us here tonight. My name is Ordal. With me is Rare Adam. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you all next time. One point in Rocket League can never make a team feel comfortable, but Driftsy wanted to show us that not only was he going to pick the pace up, but he wasn't going to let his team down. Defensive test with flying colors though they couldn't get out and that is the important part at the moment. Clears a must for UA and it's just not in the cards at the moment. Dripsy, oh. Dripsy connects off the backboard. What a shot. I watched it unfold slowly. You stopped speaking at just the right moment. Valorant is often called a team-based shooter, but sometimes it can't just be about the team. Sometimes you've got to have those hero plays. Spec wanted the spray and pray and was actually able to save the day for SVSU, tying up the series 7-7. to Hard B push here, two Omen smokes coming out. One, oh, Spec oh. fights three. What? Break through the smoke. Oh, one Spec, that's not legal, man. That's not legal. This is this is match day two of the ECAC League. You can't be doing that right now. It just goes with the call. Here in this clip, Fanshawe finds themselves with their backs against the wall, 20 seconds left on the clock, and they're desperate to take down Wake Forest. They don't have anything to get through this team, they don't have any weapons on the field, but with Jackie Moon in the wings, at least they had a sniper. Apparently. Guys gonna believe all the shots. Oh, a sniper! Jackie Moon from about midway through. What a shot right here from Jackie. Wow, good eye sniper. Yes, sir. Jackie Moon puts us on the right side. A little bit more to the left. This one would have been here in this clip we're gonna get a great moment from a pac-man and as a pac-man player i was super excited to see it we're gonna hear a lot of praise from our commentators giving mosey those compliments of choosing snake against pac-man a great counter pick they were super excited to see a snake on the field but even without their blessing trollery does not yield approach, but like you said he's trying to play the safe because losing a stock right now for concord would be really bad oh, and, well no. a little bit of commentators curse there we kind of willed that one into existence. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. No! What? Put this man. Put this man. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, Septilence, how could that be all we got from weeks number one and two? Please tell me there's more. If you like what you saw, you've got to go check out ECAC Esports on all social media platforms. Please see what they're bringing to the table. It is great collegiate esports week after week. And on the bright side, folks, this is just the beginning. We've got the whole rest of what is guaranteed to be a great season ahead of us. Thank you so much for joining me for this recap, and I'll see you on the next one. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to ECAC Plays of the Week. And it's not just any week this time, it is the playoffs. We've got eight incredible clips, and I'm super excited to jump into them. My name's Septilence. I hope you're ready to hop into the ride, because it's going to be a great one. When I found out this was clip number eight of the playoffs highlight reel, I was flabbergasted because this is an incredible moment from Swift on the side of RPI. It's not just one or two elims to win the round and put RPI in a better position. It's all five coming from a single player. Take a look. They hit him with the judge. Operator in hand. Swift is trying to be able to find some value to it. The headhunter okay. does a number on him. Okay. They're going to get a 4K. They're going to be able to get this plan down. Dakota's going to try and find him. Do they go into the tank? Yes, they do. Oh, they come out. That's the ace for Swift. They're able to make it happen all themselves. And they will get this one for free for RPI. Clip number seven tells a pretty amazing story as well. Ball State already up two games in a best of seven series, and they find themselves tied two to two, less than a minute left on the clock. 
Perhaps a little bit more pressure than they'd want there in game number three, but it's Daffy from Ball State that takes all the pressure and immediately relieves it from the team. Find it back, pass to Daffy, bar down and in. Ball State will not be denied a game. And the crossbar has been doing a heck of a job here for Hartford, keeping the ball out of the net, but it only lasts for so long as Daffy's able to get... Playoffs call for one thing unconventional plays and crazy moments. And I knew this was going to be a crazy moment when the clip started with me looking at the casters. This stock comes through so fast from Northwood that we couldn't even get just the gameplay in the clip. It wouldn't be long enough. It is an incredible moment from SGP and it just goes to show how good Northwood continues to be. I see seconds into the match and SGP's got a spike, a zero to death at that. Brother, that was literally one down here. After, after Fireball, bro, please. Oh, and now we're playing this dangerous game at the ledge.